this has a weird, like, I have to push twice. There we go. Okay, it's recording. All right. Uh, what's it? Time is 5.52. Um, I'm convening the, what is that? September 12th? Yeah, September 12th CPOT meeting. Um, this is Al Ochoza, uh, I'm a licensed, work for a licensed uh, processor and wholesaler within the city of Portland. Uh, uh, John Monteleone from Fidus Family Farms. Stephanie Neal, formerly of Oregon Springs. Danny Rowland, Fleshner Construction. Tierra Nardell, uh, journalist out of the Potential conflicts of interest at this meeting today? All right, yeah, let's do that. I have none. Anybody right. else have conflicts of interest to declare? And just do the uh, standard I don't know if I have a conflict of interest, conflict of interest, because I work, I build for everyone in the cannabis industry, so. Um, maybe we can do updates? Yeah. Is that? I think so. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, would, would anyone like to share a current event or an, uh, uh, or an event happening in town that, that you want the group to know about um, any cannabis related current events that you would like to open the floor for discussion? upon, um, I've been asked to bring the conversation to you, and I, and I briefly had a conversation with Al as we were sitting here waiting um, regarding the um, health conditions that have happened for uh, a number of people after vaping that are still being studied. No uh, definitive cause has been identified yet, but it does um, relate to um, the cannabis industry in part. And OLCC today released a, a memo that went out to all licensees um, uh, recommending some voluntary steps to uh, to uh, review um, what is in the cartridges that, that are being sold um, or produced. So um, I wanted to I <coughs> ask to talk to you guys about what you think this group's current position, um, any plan of action, at this point should be, um, or what you think the, the program, the cannabis program for the city of Portland um, should be doing at this point in time or prioritizing at this point in time. I read the article Madeline posted about the science behind some of the deaths and the lipids being inside the immune cells in the lungs. Mm -hmm. And I was unclear if that was just from the fats of the cannabis oil or if that was from the additives. I think it is undetermined yet exactly what those um, fats are, um, are, what's causing those fats yeah. to be there um, in those people who've been tested for them. Right now, um, Multnomah County Health Department has only um, forwarded and um, 
reposted the CDC's... Unknown participant is now joining. Hello, unknown participant. Oh, hello, it's Laura. Hi, everybody. Hey, Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. Um, hi. hi, Laura. This is Kimie. I was just asking the group um, if the group had any uh, advising or thoughts or guidance for the cannabis program around the recent um, memo from the OLCC and the um, uh, recent health alerts uh, around uh, the black market vaping cartridges and the vaping um, health um, illnesses that have happened for some recently. Okay. Okay. I mean, do we have quorum now? We do have quorum now. Okay. Great. Um, I think, you know, we should definitely follow the lead of OHA. And since there really isn't any definitive answers yet, I mean, everything that we'd say would be speculation at this point. I mean, there's, there's definitely different theories that a lot of people are leaning towards. Um, but as a you know, as a regulatory body for the city, the cannabis program, you know, I think uh, that, that the civic life should definitely follow the lead of OHA as far as any, you know, putting forth any opinions at the city level. Anyone else have any thoughts or? I would also say that something that we've discussed in the past is about the lack of education in public schools around cannabis health, safety in general. Mm -hmm. And obviously vaping is something that they're especially concerned about as it relates to minors and people who you know, should, are smoking products because of how they taste or what's attractive to them, all that kind of stuff is happening in schools and among um, a population that's uh, impacted by cannabis and smoking in general. Um, and so I do, I don't know what, if anything, how the city would respond to it when looking at it through that lens, but that's something that you know is important to us, how we engage with people who are underage, who are still impacted by cannabis, whether they're legally allowed to be or not, so. <clears throat> but it's my understanding that a lot of public schools do not have any official framework in place to talk about that sort of safety. Yeah. When I was at the um, <coughs> Department of Justice meeting that took place last week, mm -hmm. there was a representative from the Denver um, Department of Public Health, uh, or Denver Public Health, I think it's what they're called. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a really robust um, framework and curriculum and social media, um, presence, all kinds of, of great um, public health education that they have created around youth use, mm -hmm. um, youth and cannabis use and vaping. And so um, I was planning on sending you all the link just so that you could see. They also collect some pretty fantastic data. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the graphs that, that she shared with the group um, showed that um, uh, more so than uh, an increase for the Denver area in teen use of cannabis, um, their, their numbers actually show a downward trend in, in teen use of cannabis since legalization there. But um, what has, uh, what does seem to be significant in the data that they've been collecting is that um, teens report, in, teens in Denver report to, to their survey that um, they perceive uh, getting into a car with a, a friend who has been using cannabis is safer than getting into the car with somebody who has been drinking. And so for them, being public health, um, that having that data has been really important and valuable to them to show where they need to be 
doing some targeted public health education and outreach for youth. Mm -hmm. um, but that was just one great example of, of how they've been able to um, um, do some really great um, surveys and engagement with high schools and, and um, get a, a clearer sense through the information that they're collecting about um, what the impact has been mm -hmm. um, to the communities there in, in Denver. So um, I was pretty impressed and, and um, sent a link to um, the woman that I've been speaking with at Multnomah County Health Department um, and said, when we get together, we have a meeting scheduled for next week, when we get together, um, I, would like, I would like to talk about what Denver is doing, um, Denver Public Health person? is doing. Tamika Brazil, um, she works, uh, I believe she works with, um, with the strategic leadership uh, group at Multnomah County Health Department. Um, and so, um, you, you guys know I've been reaching out to them for months and um, we finally have some time to sit down and, and they're interested in getting more involved with what you guys are doing. So, um, this is kind of an initial conversation about how how they could be participating in, in helping in these conversations, in these discussions. Um, that said, um, so what I have regarding the um, the memos that came out from OLCC and also the alert that went out through the CDC and, and Multnomah County Health Department is um, your your Suggestions for the Bureau and the program would be to um, follow the lead of, of Oregon Health Authority um, and, um, and, and kind of explore what sort of messages and what sort of uh, campaigns are being done around youth vaping education and outreach right now um, to see if there's a, something there that I can bring back to you guys. Definitely uh, support that, that last one, but the education is going to keep you. Know, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the marijuana cannabis attorneys meeting or whatever? What yes. happened? Like what happened? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what it was, <laughs> what it was for you. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll pause for a second and let Laura introduce herself. Uh, she's on the phone. <laughs> Laura, can you hear me? So, Laura Baldwin Vega here from Green State of Mind. Um, I'm a cannabis. Sorry, it's hard. Hello? Yeah, Hi. We're here. Okay, okay. So, uh, sorry, there was just some interruption in the sound. Hmm. So, Laura Baldwin Vega from Green State of Mind. No new um, issues, just same. You know, I'm a cannabis participant and involved in the cannabis community, own a business, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Stopped yourself mid-fight. No. <laughs> Sorry, Catherine. <No. laughs> um, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure. Um, Catherine Kranjak from Prosper Portland. Um, yeah, no complex or anything to report. Thank you. Um, okay, so I will share with you um, I attended um, the uh, Department of Justice meeting uh, of the state's attorneys. It was, um, I believe it was titled the Marijuana Summit 2019, uh, organized by our state attorney, Billy Williams, and facilitated by him as well. Um, it consisted of a number of panel conversations um, I uh, I was not aware of the um, established trend in conversation topics and tone prior to attending. Um, so I kind of went into it with a, 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 a clean slate or a blank slate as far as um, what 
the intended outcomes or goals were um, uh, it has a, uh, the, the conversations, the panels had um, a very um, heavy enforcement and regulation um, theme throughout. Um, so a lot of the panelists were speaking about um, the large diversion uh, activities or um, big busts that had happened in the states that um, had uh, panelists presenting. Um, uh, and then uh, the final panel, uh, and I, I kind of subbed in for Brandon at the last minute, so I wasn't <laughs> really, um, I hadn't taken a close look at the agenda, um, but the final panel was uh, intended to be focused on um, uh, economic development and uh, kind of social equity related to cannabis. Uh, there were only two panel presenters. Um, so uh, one was a um, uh, representative from MAPS Credit Union, and uh, the other was uh, Jeanette Horton from, Jeanette Ward Horton from uh, New Leaf. And um, I think uh, overall uh, my, my feedback uh, that I will be providing to the organizing body and the facilitator um, because I think that they were hoping for and intending for um, a, a diverse set of perspectives and experiences to be um, shared and engaged around. Um, I, I didn't really feel like the lineup and the um, the facilitation supported that. And so um, I felt that Jeanette did an amazing job talking about the uh, community reinvestment in, um, uh, in communities that have been most harmed by prohibition. Um, but I also think that um, there should have been uh, additional voices up there speaking to and reinforcing that concept and that work, given that um, she was presenting <coughs> to a room of over a hundred uh, enforcement officials, law enforcement officials and uh, regulators. Um, so uh, I will share that letter with you. Uh, I'm working on crafting that right now, um, but that will be on behalf of me as the representative from the city who had attended. And just to be clear, that was a closed door meeting? My understanding is that it was invitation only. And in terms of arranging the lineup, the city of Portland's cannabis program was not consulted in that? My understanding, and I, and I asked around a little bit, my understanding is that um, we um, did not receive uh, an invitation to speak. And I hope you will address that in your letter. Yes, yes. I have some constructive feedback for that. So. And there's no way to, is there anything online or anywhere where we can read minutes or any, anything other than he said, she said outside of it? I don't. No, I will look into that. I'll look into that. Um, um, I was not provided with anything um, post attendance. Uh, I believe there might have, I may have received an email that had some of the PowerPoint presentations. Um, so let me see what, what has been circulated and what's been posted. Um, but um, 
there were there were a number of um, individuals in the room who um, had similar kind of feedback. So I hope that um, they will be sharing it as well. And how often do they meet? I, it's a once a year. Okay. Right? My understanding is it's a once a year meeting. I would absolutely go again. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> immediately afterwards, I, I went to um, my supervisors and leadership and said, in this situation in the future, may I, as the city of Portland representative, do dot, 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 do, do, do. So um, I have a much clearer understanding of what, um, what, I, uh, what my role is and could be. And so my last question was if it was fruitful or not, or if it, did you feel like, like what came out of it, did you feel from that meeting? Anything tangible or? Um, hmm. That's a tough one. I think that I do have a better understanding of some of the challenges for um, federal regulators around the speed with which legalization has happened in certain states and the challenges um, around the simultaneous um, uh, kind of skyrocketing um, increase in land that's been um, dedicated to growing hemp. Mm -hmm. and, um, and again, this issue of competency for regulators, for at the federal and at the local level, um, and What I took away from it is that they are um, feeling like they need more education, more tools um, to better to better understand and differentiate um, between certain products and activities. So, um, I, I thought it was fruitful. I think that um, there are even more opportunities next year if um, we can have a bigger presence, um, both from city representatives there and also um, around the conversation around economic development and social equity, um, use of the campus funds. Um, so uh, Dr. Knox was there as well, and it was very helpful to the group to have a physician with a deep understanding and background in um, endocannabinology. Oh, God. <laughs> endocannabinology. <laughs> endocannabinology. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, it's a late in the day. Um, having an expert there was really valuable. Um, and oftentimes, uh, when there were um, questions or people struggling through some of the science, um, the microphone was handed directly to her <laughs> out in the audience. Nice. <laughs> so, um, so that was that was great. Um, okay. Since you have quorum, would you like to jump back to the minutes? Yes. So, I guess were we just going to go ahead and separate into work or the working groups? Do you want to get the um, approval of August, the August minutes oh. off of the plate? Uh, yes. Did, did, you have, did everybody get a chance to review August minutes? I know I. You can take a few minutes if you need to. Yeah, can I? If anybody else needs them too. Hi, people. Thank you so much for coming.
Does anybody have any issues with the meeting minutes from August? No. today so <laughs> I think would you like to come yeah please join us at the table um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this but I think you guys can eat yeah so like yeah please do yeah. if you're hungry meeting um, you all had discussed um, some activities around public engagement with the recommendations and um, what I heard um, out of that meeting was that um, there were kind of three strategies that the group wanted to use to do public engagement around um, shaping these recommendations, doing the final kind of shaping for these recommendations. Um, one was a survey that would be available to and pushed out through um, kind of an email blast uh, uh, to the general public um, for input and ideas and thoughts around the broader topic areas of sustainability, competency, research, and social equity. Um, and we would provide a little bit of um, guidance as to what you mean by those topics. Um, and Catherine had offered, and I'm still going to ask you to no. provide <laughs> just a starter for that. Okay. That would be great. Um, uh, and then also a more targeted survey um, to um, community organizations and other key stakeholder groups. Um, where they would receive an actual copy of the draft recommendations and be asked to provide um, feedback on the draft recommendations from um, their own organizational or community standpoint or perspective. Um, and then two or three um, in-person community conversations um, and opportunities um, to engage with the public around the broad areas um, and I wanted to pose a question to you as a group, because October is also the um, time in which the social equity grant cycle for the next funding cycle is um, 
planned to start doing community conversations. If you wanted to um, fold in some of the broad and more personal conversation around where should we be spending this money um, into your community conversations that you're going to have. Um, or if you would prefer to keep those things separate, um, we can absolutely do that. But it does seem to have kind of a natural um, fit in with, you know, are these the things we should be focusing on? Is this where we should be spending the money? Where do you, if not, where do you think we should be spending the money? How, how is this money best spent or reinvested in the community? So just to be clear, you're saying that these meetings are already planned to happen for the social equity grants to community conversations? The dates are not planned. The, but the idea The month have. is set aside oh, okay. to have those conversations, to start those conversations in anticipation of releasing the funding opportunity announcement for the next cycle in November. And so you're asking us if we want to have Do you want to fold meetings? those grant uh, questions into your conversations um, and kind of piggyback those into a bigger conversation or if you want, um, if you would prefer to keep them separate? Or if you have any opinion? I mean, was the intention that Civic Life staff was gonna be having those sessions anyhow, mm -hmm. like is that that's part of your work plan anyhow. Mm -hmm. So the question is like, why not just tag on to that because they yes you naturally go together. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and it, I I believe that um, some of the most engaged and interested both community members and community organizations um, would want to be part of both. Yeah, and yeah. so um, you know what we. What that looks like, we can we can figure out a way that is engaging and not too taxing on the individuals. But um, but I wanted to check in with you about whether or not you thought that was something that felt like a a good fit, or um, or if you wanted to, to keep those conversations separate. Sounds like a benefit to me to do them together. So. I would think we'd also have more of a turnout too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and we would have grant staff, myself, and also Georgia, <coughs> who's the management analyst, there to, you know, participate in those conversations too around the funding. But it would really be more around this broader where should, you know, where do you think we should be spending the money? Less about the details, sure. um, because we'll have information sessions later on where we can. So would those meetings stand in place of our regular Thursday meeting? Or is this an addition to the meeting? So if you wanted to do two or three, one of them could be the regular October meeting on October 10th. Okay. And then um, another one could be just another community conversation. I mean, they would both be um, promoted the same way one would just happen to be your regular CPAP meeting. And it doesn't have to happen on October 10th. We can adjust the date okay. um, so that maybe you do one one week and one the next so they're closer in spacing, um, but in different parts of town, So it sounds like we're agreeing to think about, yes, doing this right no. now, but then. I mean, so I guess two questions, two clear questions I have for you is um, one, are you, um, actually three questions. Uh, one, um, does this capture the strategies that you want to use for public engagement around your recommendations? Two, um, um, do you want to fold some of those funding, how should we be spending the cannabis revenue questions in? That's the second question. And the third one is, um, I guess more of like a nuts and bolts question. Do you want to have uh, the first one on that October 10th date, or do you want to push the date out? And we can pick a different date, maybe at, uh, the next, the following Thursday, um, 
but it depends on what works for you guys. I like to keep the October 10th date just because I think we all have that continuity in our calendars already for coming out on the second Thursday. Okay. Um, so I guess whoever is in charge of scheduling those communities, if we could just make sure an October 10th one happens, that would be great. And I'm open to you having it here, or if we want to do it somewhere else, I know that was a part of the conversation to you. Um, but that's also a question I had for members of the community, where else might we best engage people because not everybody feels comfortable coming to City Hall. So if you have any ideas about spaces where we might be able to do that, um, I think outside of downtown and the immediate city center would be really great if we could do that. You, you had that one, when you did the grant reach out, outreach, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. in East Portland, mm -hmm. that facility was great. I mean, a lot of people showed up and I'm thinking that is easier parking, easier access. And yeah. It's a city facility, so that's an idea. But. Yeah. One thing about that venue, are you speaking to the morning? Because some folks, the police being right there mm -hmm. on site was a challenge. Mm -hmm. for, was it at oh. that same particular no, site? Okay. No, about. this would be the East Portland Neighborhood Got Organization it. Office. Um, right. Or, or any of the community centers. Sure. We were saying yeah. before, maybe Charles Jordan um, or Dishman. Yeah. Or, or, um, but it's good things to keep in mind to, um, you know, other environmental factors that um, that would come into play. Um, so, uh, hopefully, everybody has access to my email. Please feel free to to send me, or if you have other ideas, um, while we're having this meeting tonight or um, in the upcoming weeks, please send, send me some ideas. Um, but so we're looking at right now um, the first one taking place on October 10th um, in place of the regular CPOP meeting. Okay. So we're all in First of all, I really appreciate being given a seat at the table and being part of this conversation. My name is Anthony Bean, I'm a citizen, retired. Um, the last uh, batch of social, social equity grants that were awarded, um, I've looked on the website and I may just not be looking in the right place. Is any of that information available to read and review in order to prepare for a meeting like this? Yes, so the, um, the, the so year one, was granted to Metropolitan Public Defenders, um, Green Hop Academy to do workforce development in, in the cannabis business, um, and um, uh, POIC at Rosemary Anderson High School to do workforce development in pre-construction. Um, that information is all available because that grant is um, almost at the end of its cycle. The the grant cycle that is year two has actually not gone to council yet for approval. So that is why you're not finding much information about those decisions yet, um, where we are at in that process. And that's a good reminder that I should probably send out uh, just a progress update to everybody. Um, where we are at with that is that um, the review panel met, made their recommendations, uh, those recommendations went to the bureau director. The bureau director um, made her recommendations to the commissioner, Commissioner Udaley. Um, and now we have a date for council of October 16th. Um, you are all invited um, and encouraged to attend. Uh, October 16th, we will be presenting to city council at 10 a.m. in the morning. Um, and we are slated to have about a 40-minute presentation in which uh, um, all of the current grantees as well as the um, uh, recommended projects um, will have an opportunity to uh, present and speak to council about the work that they have done or they intend to do. Um, and. Um, we will be reporting out on uh, the work that has been done and lessons learned and um, uh, room for growth and opportunities looking ahead um, cool. at that meeting. And that is the point at which um, everybody will learn. Um, once council approves, then 
uh, then we can move forward with lots of celebratory media notices and, and postings. Can you repeat the date and time, please? Yeah. October 16th at 10 a.m. In city chambers. City chambers. Thank you. Thanks for the prompt. Okay. Okay. So, so I think I have my answers on those. We'll have some action items for myself. So just um, to, to circle back and confirm uh, the feedback from the public engagement, as we had discussed at the last meeting, would be to help inform the bureau with decisions regarding the upcoming grant cycle would enhance and deepen our, your current recommendations as well as help provide some guidance for future activities moving into 2020 um, and serve as kind of a jumping off or starting point for further engagement, further public engagement on policy um, moving forward. I was going to say, before we jump into it, I would love to know who is at the table. So oh, people, good idea. Wouldn't mind introducing yourselves and just tell us what brought you here and what your relationship to cannabis or cannabis policy is. Whoever wants to start, go for it. Uh, my name is Nee Avioto. Um, I am a cannabis researcher and lover. I work at Oregon's Finest. Um, and I'm all about equity and humanity period and you know the cross sections of cannabis and how we deal with it so that's my hey i'm laquita lanford and um i would say well i work with greenhop and um also a community organizer and community uh cannabis educator have been working on advocacy in my own capacity and to being able to uh, spend more time very uh, structured environment around the social equity grant. Um, I could say a lot of different things, but y'all know me, some of y'all do. And uh, I just wanna say thanks for those who attended this meeting that were at the last and first Reclaiming Cannabis um, meeting or convenient that we have here was a really uh, good success, I would say, in the time, the short amount of time that we had. Um, we didn't watch the, we didn't watch the video, uh, the movie, the documentary, but we did have a really fruitful conversation which led to other people having more interest in what this process was all about and some of those folks are here today. When was that? You were out of the loop. I must have been. <laughs> 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 it was August 27th. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Arthur Lee Dietrich Croy. Um, I want to thank Laquita for putting on that event last month, I think. I brought my ass down here. Um, I spent about 20 years in creative strategy and collaborative arts and kind of the design world. And I feel like I want to put my time somewhere else. And I spent uh, the last three years working on a project that led me here. And uh, yeah, I just want to offer my time here uh, to try to champion the movement. It needs to be something that keeps coming up. And I realize pretty much anything that we learn here to the town that I grew up in. It's a center between Detroit and Cincinnati in Ohio, and there's one of the biggest uh, correctional facilities in that town. So there's a lot of work to be done once legalization happens there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just here, listening and learning, and uh, offering my time. Uh, again, my name's Anthony Dean. I'm, I'm a retired middle school counselor and a prevention specialist. I worked with the North Clackamas School District. I was involved in a lot of efforts related to the Safe and Drug Free Schools grants. Um, I have an interest in grants. I've written them and been on uh, review committees and reading them. Um, I've been attending uh, the meetings for about, I think, four or five months now. And I'm really uh, grateful that we have this process and that it's open. And I'm learning a lot. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chanel Perry. Um, I am from Los Angeles. Um, I work at Metro and Public Service in the Communications Department. Um, I have a, a wealth of knowledge about cannabis, the history of cannabis in America, and I'm excited to be a part of people who are thinking about the future of cannabis. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm 
name's Susan Voss. I'm just a community member. I'm, I might be sort of in the minority. I am here, um, I don't know how to say, but I'm, I, as a community member, I've had some concerns about some of the, um, and I'm not opposed to legalization, but just some of the um, policies that haven't caught up yet and some of the <coughs> negative impacts that I've noticed um, just as a parent and in the community and with other neighbors I've spoken with. Um, later I'll mention a specific concern on a specific matter, but um, I, I guess I, I'm sort of feeling like there's been a push of um, support for those in the cannabis community, which is fine, but then it's those of us who maybe aren't in the industry or aren't in the community or aren't, you know, par participants in a sense, have sort of been left in the dust a little bit. There's some of us that feel that. Um, and not like we have a, a voice. So I appreciate this this voice here to, to be able to sort of share some of the negative impacts that we have noticed. Um, and I'm just hoping the city can, you know, find ways to add in policies that maybe had yet gotten developed yet. Maybe I, I have faith will still be, it's still new, you know, as an industry. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a mix of rights <laughs> that are allowed out there, uh, hopefully, and I'm just hoping that we can find that balance, so, yeah. Since we're going to be discussing recommendations, can I ask you, you don't have to go into details right now, but specifically yeah. the issues that brought you here, like what are they related yeah, to? Yeah, so I talked to the cannabis program a couple of days ago and they recommended this as a place to speak about a specific concern and that relates to um, cannabis plants in yards. Okay and the strong smell and children, my children playing nearby and maybe some, the lack of regulation around that and maybe some ways we might be able to make that easier for families in, in like dense neighborhoods where you can't really escape it if it's growing nearby. Okay. Is there anything else or is that sort of like the main? That's the later when I sign up to okay. speak with that I'll speak on. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you and who just came in? Can you introduce yourself and is there any conflict of interest? Yeah, Tim Zerman with Indoor Cultivation Systems. Um, I'm a cannabis business owner, and so I probably have a conflict of interest in a lot of these topics. Cool. And then just to like catch everybody up, so what we're going to be working on is the working draft. And can you remind me, so this will actually be finalized and go to um, Commissioner, I mean, not, well, actually, I guess Director Ree and then Commissioner, can you remind us, like, Yes. The process. Yes. Right? So um, um, the recommendations developed by this group and with input from the public and feedback from the public um, will be presented to um, our bureau director, the director of the Office of Community and Civic Life, um, as well as to the program supervisor for the cannabis program, um, and to um, Commissioner U. Daly's. Uh, office. Uh, that is kind of the first piece. Um, what happens beyond that is determined by what um, the program supervisor and the director uh, and the commissioner choose to do with those recommendations moving forward. Um, but the other piece of this is that this group's recommendations are one component um, once this group finishes and finalizes their recommendations and presents to um, presents to uh, city leadership um, and bureau leadership, then um, the program will write a response and identify action items from this um, in order to convey to both the group and to members of the public um, what we will be working on and what you all as a group and, and members of the public can be um, holding us accountable for making progress on. Um, and if there is something that we can't work on or there's some reason why we, we um, have to postpone addressing something, that explanation will be in the report that's written, a response report. Um, so that would be kind of a companion document that will come directly from the cannabis program 
Um, so that is what you guys are working on right now. This um, has been all along, it's been a public draft, working draft, and will continue to be. And then once it's finalized, it will also be um, on the, the CPLOT website. Um, and uh, depending on how um, our bureau wants to push it out from there, then um, that may get distributed in other avenues. And just to reemphasize, these are recommendations Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, the, they are rec they are all recommendations. Um, are they out? Hmm? Are those? Oh, they should be. There's almost. Oh, should be oh is some it on there? there? Okay. Uh, it's the thicker document. Yes. And everybody who wants to participate in the conversation should probably have one of the sure. packets in front of them. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Is that, is this the one? Oh, that's the one. I introduced myself as we went around and started here. Oh, did you not? No, I was waiting. Oh, okay, sorry about right, that. That's okay. That. We all know. It's because I'm used to see. Right, right, right. I've been here. But, but please go and introduce okay, yourself. Since I'm part of the community too, uh, right now, and that is I've applied for CPOD. I'm very interested in what okay. Paul's doing. But Mike Rockland, I'm a, I'm a cannabis nurse, but that doesn't really describe me or my skills. I've got engineering background, all sorts of stuff. But I'm very interested in the medical use because I mean that's where the passion is for what this plant's about. The legal recreational side is what has been passed in law, not the medical. A huge difference. Huge difference in the intent, huge difference in the outcomes, huge difference in um, everything about it. So that's what, I mean when you're talking about home grows, that's a whole different thing too because a lot of people are growing for themselves. But my passion is really education, and uh, that includes not just peers and physicians and nurses, but patients and consumers and communities so they know what the appropriate use is. And if people choose to use it recreationally, I don't like the word, but it's, that's what it is. That's their choice. They just need to know how to use it safely. So that's from that. And then also, this is just wonderful because thanks for inviting us to the table to have a real good community conversation to bring everybody together because otherwise we're kind of standing back and uh, yeah. I think this is part of that engagement, so thank you. Yeah. Mike, we've been at the table since day one. We just got mm -hmm. one last <laughs> So, actually, y'all. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a big table and I encourage you all to keep coming back and to bring more people with you um, right. every time. So, thank you everybody for being here. Um, I don't know what the best way to bring everybody up is, but yeah. I feel like at least one yeah, I'm. I'm wondering, do you guys want to do just a quick walkthrough um, of the document in its entirety, and then we can split uh, and do a little review and wordsmithing? Yeah, that Does works. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. Okay. And so, if anybody has questions along the way, then we can help fill you in. Like, just say so. So, um, based on the. Feedback that um, I received, um, some of the ideas and, and concepts that you guys have already worked on. Um, I continued to kind of massage the format um, and shift some things around. And so the executive statement now leads with that piece that you guys have identified of wanting to lead with the statement of Portland and Oregon need a cohesive strategy and plan for cannabis. Um, most of the language that falls beneath is the, the same that you have um, reviewed and read before. But overall, I tried to take some of your advice and um, remove some of, and, and not lead with passive statements, so try and take some of the more action-oriented um, sentences and move them up towards the beginning of uh, each of these sections. Uh, I thought a natural fit underneath that would be talking a, a little bit about who um, you are as a group. Um, and then going into this, um, what some of the core assumptions are um, about 
what will be done with this information and how it will be used. One thing that um, we had, you as a group had talked about, um, and we didn't actually wordsmith, so I would like from you all to really pay attention to um, these definitions that I'm suggesting, um, is um, having definitions for some of these um, terms. Actually having a group definition for what we mean when we talk about equity, what do we mean when we talk about sustainability, so that it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the document when people read something, when they read the word sustainability or um, social equity. If you don't mind taking a minute right now just to read through those definitions, um, if something jumps out at you. Um, <coughs> I've got a pen ready somewhere. Every I keep do, I, what am I doing with the pen? Oh, <laughs> keep one. Oh, oh thank you. No, no, I found it. It's hiding. <laughs> I found it. Thank you. Thank you. come from just around the city or just uh, I'm just curious about the evolution of it. Some of them are from the Bureau's um, racial equity plan. Okay. Uh, some of them are from the um, the city's uh, overall plan for Portland. Um, but um, but otherwise uh, this was my best shot at coming up with a definition that aligned with the conversations that you have had in this room. Um, and so some of them are kind of Frankensteined together. Um, and uh, need your, I mean all of them, the whole document will need your stamp of approval, but I, I do want um, some direct guidance from you about these definitions because they really do need to meet this group's uh, interpretation and, and defining of, of those terms. Good start. Yeah, thank you. I like the definitions right here. It's a really, you know, maybe it's like it could be a time, a more time of process when we got like right now, maybe mm -hmm. the time to dig into that. Sure. Sure. So maybe yeah, just if nothing's jumping out at you right away, as book. Yes. Oh, well. No. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. No. Um, guess when we're talking about reparative, um, I think it's important to use language that fits the narrative. And serving to make amends for a past harm or wrong is a little too soft. I think that maybe just scratching out past harm wrong and just saying inhumanities to just say speak a little bit stronger in terms of why we're like going after particular things um 
I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Specificity. Yeah, like locking people up. Yeah, yeah. like this yeah. is not like a, ooh, you hurt my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The story of life. Yeah. So it's, yeah. And I, I, I want to piggyback on the, on the definitions of really bringing a strong message uh, as us being the third recreational state. I mean, we're setting a tone um, in a sense of looking at that. So to 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 say what we mean and mean what we say, because sure. this document is gonna live mm -hmm. forever, for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what we're, re we're realizing in the historical context of black America is that policies have been put in place in language that destroyed a, a community or a activity for folks to thrive. And so we're talking about the past to evolve into a, 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 a sustainable future. And this is what I'm wondering why we're using sustainability in cannabis um, as one of them. But yeah, just say what we mean and mean what we say um, in these, these definitions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we as a group are defining these these words for people to be reading the policy document that we're going to be putting forward. So this is what we're defining it as. It mm -hmm. doesn't need to go through like the city lawyer or anything like that. This is how you as a group are defining these terms. Right. And to give some guidance to those reading it. Right. To understand and, and be aligned with how you intended those words to be right. interpreted. OK, perfect. Yeah. Um, you're not setting a definition for the whole city of Portland. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> I just didn't know if we needed yeah. to go outside of that with the lawyer or anything mm -hmm. for how we're, but since it's a, it's a recommendation mm -hmm. document, it doesn't mm -hmm. get it. OK. So is it possible to like send, like, you know, because I don't want to just, I'm literally over here editing these definitions, and I don't want to be like, this, 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 so can I email this? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And this is available online with the, um, as a PDF with the, um, with the um, Under Sea Pots webpage with the agenda and materials. Okay. Um, um, so feel free, or you could just, you know, make a copy of whatever you sent, or if you don't have like PDF editing software. Um, so yes, feel free to, to send okay. your suggestions and edits. Okay, so if nothing else is really jumping out in the definitions piece, I'll just keep walking through. Um, there's just, yeah, there's just one. I, yeah. I feel like the equity definition doesn't, yes. like it's such an important word and it's not really, yes. uh, like I, I don't know if we talk about systemic uh, inequities or I, I don't know if that's like baked in, but this gotta be better. This yeah. is, like this sounds very like philosophical. Sure. And I'm like, yeah, I it should be more on the body, yes. you know. Yes. Yeah. yes, I think for this to be for equity to be the founding, like the girth of what this is, and for this to be a one line definition, I think is not enough. That's just what I'm saying, just because I think there's more to talk about in equity than what is said. I fully expect suggestions from both of you. No, you're going to get them. I definitely think we should also change the, get rid of the equivalency out of the definition for equity. Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's almost like saying the same thing. Yeah. 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 But uh, I definitely yeah. agree with that, that it, it needs to be, the definitions yeah. need to be yeah. stronger. I know, I mean, I'm, I feel um, like I have other definitions. Are we yeah, just a okay. definition? Yeah. Yeah. Great, if you have suggestions, that would be great. Um, I also feel like I'm just I'm yeah. just yeah. mentioning the words that I'm like ah this doesn't sit with me yeah. um, sustainability um, <coughs> yeah I don't know there has to be something more holy I don't know at a certain level I don't there's something there where I'm like this doesn't I don't feel like that totally captures what we're talking about we're talking about like longevity longevity yeah. health uh, health of a full community or ecosystem like regenerative. My kind of thought is how yeah. can we be how, what if if it's so uneven right now, it's so lopsided, the industry going one way and leaving out a whole nother segment of the community, is that what we're trying to keep sustainable? You know, I mean don't we have to get to a point 
before we can create sustainability, you know, at least a, at least a level that's, that we want to maintain. I mean, I get sustainability on a whole lot of different levels, but I mean, maybe it's premature to have sustainability because we're not where we need to be to sustain, you know, what we want to sustain. But if we mention the word in our document, we need to define what yeah. we're no, talking totally, about. Yeah. Yeah. So well, no, totally, but I'm saying. Yeah, no, no. It doesn't have to say I feel like it's It doesn't like, fit what we're even talking about. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. It's like to maintain the integrity of like all human life and the earth or something, you know, kind of like larger than I feel like it needs to be about. If you're going to talk about maintain, yeah. maintain and care for, you know, human life and earth or something like that. Um, so Catherine will send. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting it. Yeah. 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 Great. You add it for yeah. <laughs> um, and I will revisit, um, Stephanie sent a, a bunch of great stuff to, I will revisit that and see if there's something else from there that better aligns with what everybody is kind of saying, uh, mentioning too. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, I am proposing that you include some um, articles or other pieces of, of information that will help give people a kind of a crash course in the background and the context for these recommendations. Are we? Are we? Yeah, that might be a good idea to to be able to include you know footnotes where we take you know subject matter that we you know read or seen out there and be able to footnote it into the recommendation. You know. Again, giving it that documented support. Sure. You know. Yeah. So if you haven't yet read these articles or watched this TED Talk, um, I would ask that you do. Um, and um, just it's just to kind of get you thinking about do you want to have something like that? Um, it doesn't have to be at the start like this, it could be at the end, but I felt like it should, I don't know, my thing was like, it has to be front loaded. People have to, you can't get everything that you need to get out of this unless you have a better <coughs> understanding of the, what's going on. Um, but I don't know uh, if you want to have something like that in there. Well, I think it's important, especially like what I was saying, <clears throat> if we're talking about, say, the city auditor's report on cannabis tax, that was the one thing that sure got me fired up uh, for a while. Um, if we're talking about it in recommendation one, there's a, a uh, way down here, it's social equity recommendation one, so the, the first one, do we reference what, like, after reading the city auditor's report, we think that we should change the percentage of how this is allocated. You know, like mm -hmm. this is why we came to this decision. I, I, yeah. So. Yeah. Like you're saying, now footnotes somehow. Footnotes where they're or, appropriate. And but we've given them the opportunity to see these things in the beginning, like you're saying, Kimmy. So I guess I guess I'm just agreeing with the format as you have it now, except that maybe we need to, in our recommendations, say what how we got there or or reference those materials. Okay. Um, so jumping past the bios, I would ask that you guys, um, we'll fill in the community participation piece. Um, actually, now that you guys have a set plan and strategy, I can start to build that piece out. Um, other, if you wouldn't mind taking a look at the stakeholder list. We don't have to do this right now, but as you are um, reading through these on your own later, if there are stakeholder groups that you think should be represented on here or eliminated from here, please uh, let me know. I think veterans is missing. Mm. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a smaller group, but I'm a little bit of a master's. Um, I was at 
Um, this is the part where I really tried to make the, the leading sentence one of action. Um, so when you break into your two groups to do independent work, um, if you could um, start by taking a look at the language in there and um, make any suggestions or edits. Um, I was thinking we were we were discussing whether or not we need to specifically say that people of color need to be, you know, if people of color need to be in this list. Even mm -hmm. though I think my assumption was like in general what we're looking for is racial diversity in all the decision making processes that we have, or that's like a lens and we're posting recommendations with. But maybe it might need to be spelled out for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it might be. What do you guys think? I mean, I, I was. I was asking Tierra because I didn't want to be the one to bring it up, honestly. But, but I'm, I'm assuming glad that you did. Because, because, you know, uh, yeah, we all know that this is what we're doing. Yeah. But the biggest stakeholder that we're talking about for 50% of the grant, what we're hoping for, is people of color, right? In the communities have been affected sure. disproportionately. So, yes, like there are people of color in all of these different categories, sure. but do we need to specify that is my question. Well, and, and that's up to you guys if you want to um, identify that in addition to what's here, if you want to rework the stakeholder layout. Um, I mean, that could just be one sentence that's in there that says that to you instead of just yeah. putting it like burying it at the bottom or something like that. Yeah. Or anybody who has been um, criminal, criminal justice involved as a result of cannabis prohibition. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's an and, maybe not an or, because mm -hmm. just to say that to not be affected criminally by the criminalization of it, that's not the end of it. You know, it's a definite part of yeah. it, but mm -hmm. I've never been in jail for cannabis, but I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I've been, you know, Louisiana with plenty of cannabis before, so it still is very effective. It affects your what you can do, your enterprising opportunities. Yeah. So I don't think, I think that's that's an and, not a four. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it should go, mm -hmm. they have its own added to the list, but that, that still could be a, a one or two sentences that say, this is who we're really, what we're thinking of as well. Like, yeah. Especially, like, you know, within these broad categories. So want to add to that for a second? Is <laughs> so can I add something? I don't know what yes. the right word is, like ex-offender comes to mind, but whatever. No, but transition from prison to community is really a key issue in the grants and everything else we've talked about. So somehow, yeah, that should be a standalone, I think. Mm -hmm. You've been arrested and or in prison, maybe, whatever that. To piggyback from that, I, I imagine families and communities impacted most by the criminalization of cannabis is a good en encompassing term. Oh. Yeah. I feel like this should even be in the definitions, and oh. I'm wondering if that should be another definition, because we mm. always think community is disproportionately harmed by, right. by the um, oh, okay. 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 And then I, I'm, I'm also kind of wondering whether in that definition we actually call out the data on like specifically which communities, because I think that, I don't know if you have that data, but the data shows that African American and Native American Right. Or, yeah, which is, yes, arrest data. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, we could, maybe we can add that to that front section there of the different articles to look at. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, that's a great idea. As another visual aid, we can pull some of those graphs mm -hmm. um, and data from the, the state uh, uh, arrest and conviction oh, yeah. report. Mm -hmm. What did you volunteer? What did I say I was doing? Or didn't say I was doing? You volunteered me I was doing? Yeah, I volunteered you. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, crafting some language um, to um, to capture the the uh, stakeholder kind of definitions and groups that um, aren't really fully captured by these 
listed here. So um, whether that's uh, communities of color or uh, families and communities that have been impacted most by the criminalization of cannabis. Um, I, I also, I, I think about the, how the legalization of <coughs> cannabis nationally has opened the door to historically look back at the war on drugs uh, government agenda. Because in our, my community, it wasn't cannabis that people, they were busting down doors. It was crack cocaine. Um, this is just a war, a, the war on drugs. Right? Sure. It's not cannabis, sure. we say, yes. that affect our community. That's not why my mother went to prison. That's not why other people in my family and in my mm -hmm. community went to prison. Um, but we're able to use that as a um, cover um, today or as, uh, yeah. So I feel like if we want to be real, we definitely want to look at that history context of what those definitions meant. Because you read, I've read over 50, 60 articles that open the gate of saying war on drugs. Yeah. And that's, that's just a way to have the, um, the rush, the money rush. Yeah. Not, we're, just, we're thinking about the people at the, the aftermath. But yeah. that's already been yeah. damaged. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> yeah. I mean, and I think that also relates a bit to something that Catherine, you brought up, I think, at the last meeting about the importance of um, this group continuing to not only connect to but reach out to um, other, other groups, other issues, other um, situations that are concurrent and connected, for example, um, around housing and, um, um, and, and I see kind of a relationship there around um, the work that this group does and broader conversations around drug policy reform mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, possession of controlled substances at small amounts, those sorts of drug policy reform conversations that are taking place. Yep. And where does this group want to um, um, relate to or be connected to or engage with those conversations that are connected um, um, to what, what you are doing? Um, so, and how do you want to integrate that into the recommendations if you do? Um, that connectivity and um, um, like you had been talking about and continue to bring up, it is an ecosystem and what happens in one part of, of, of that system um, has a ripple effect across all parts. Um, so thank you. I have some ideas for, for how those things could be integrated and I'll kind of share them with the group out of my head. Um, Can I just ask one quick question? Yes. Nicole, will you? Oh, yes. Yes. My name is Nicole Kennedy. Um, yeah. <laughs> I am uh, owner of Green Hop. Um, I don't know what else am I supposed to say about myself. Yes. Um, I also run an academy through Green Hop where we teach um, African Americans on how to get into the industry. Um, <clears throat> We teach about the science of cannabis and um, all aspects from seed to sale. So, you know anybody looking to get in? Send them my way. It has been a long day. Oh my gosh! I was just doing sixth sixth grade math, and I need to get back home so I can give my three year old a bath. And so, thank you. Of course, I definitely wanted to be here, so I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So. Um, I did not create a break in tonight's agenda. If you have to get up and do something, please just do. Yeah. That was my thinking. Um, but um, I think that um, it makes sense at this point to um, split and do some actual diving in in smaller groups into the, um, the recommendations. Um, I was just going to ask oh, really yeah. quickly, only because I'm enjoying waiting at the point so far, do we have to break into groups or can we continue to go through this? It's like, up to you guys. Okay. Yeah. I like talking about it openly, like going through each thing. Oh. So. Yeah. yeah. 
Plus we're kind of short on time now, okay. too. Well, let's keep it moving. Then. If you got to go to the bathroom and get water, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Dropping the gas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then. Wait, so do you want to just dive right in then? Yeah, no, I mean. Uh, I feel like if you want to take over, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So I, well, I was just going to ask. Did we skip over anything? We went from the oh, okay. uh, Just the system. description of oh. the process, your bios. Yeah. Um, each of the members, please please review your bio. Make sure it's what you want it to say. I might streamline them a tiny bit, okay. but um, otherwise I'll, I'll stick to what you all submitted. Okay. Um, I will just say that everybody who's on CPOT individually can take their own time to look at their bios and if there's something that you want to turn down, turn down, but I'll let you work on that with everybody else and okay. skip that part now. Um, so I guess we can just go ahead and get started on the guiding principles. Um, I don't think it makes sense to like read them all out. Why don't we just take, uh, how many are there? One, two, three, four, four. So if we just take a minute to look over these. If anything stands out to anybody, um, or if something's missing, feel free to say that. But for now, just take a minute to look those over. And so, can we give the public a kind of a insight on like why it's broken up into these four things and then what we did? You can absolutely do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I missed one of these meetings, so. Uh, oh, yeah. was that an excuse? Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 oh wow! Yeah. Oh, I need to go back. Dr. Knox and I had some epiphany, and I don't remember what happened. <laughs> um, yes, what was it? We, we, I mean, we, it was just we were just reorganizing categories. I think mm -hmm. who else was there? <laughs> well, I think that we had a lot of. I think wasn't this like we were like spitballing all the things that we think are issues that we want to address, mm -hmm. and it was like how do we organize these organize into categories? Them. Right, and we like had it up on the ball, wall, and right. we started condensing everything together. So we came up right. with these. Oh. Social equity, research, competency, and sustainability, and how we wanted to present these recommendations to the city of Portland right. mm -hmm. through our channels, because we're just a advisory body, right? So, so then these are the recommendations that have been come up with since we started in February. Was it February? Yeah. Um, so. uh, long, long. End of February. End of February. Yeah. 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 I think I think the I mean social equity speaks for itself. Um, the research was um, I think in either of the, the Dr. Knox is on the phone. No, no neither no, Dr. Holes or Dr. Knox could be here tonight. No. Well no. um yeah, I think I think we were just finding that because it's emerging industry that there's just a, a lack of kind of use of data and research and really diving into what's actually really happening. So, um, and that also there's well, nationally there's a huge lack of research on um, impacts of cannabis. So that was a big chunk. Um, both like how is that playing out in the community and um, health? And there's a whole lot of pieces of research that are missing. Uh, and then the competency was just really like there are a lot of stakeholders that interface with the industry, that interface with the community, um, and just making sure that folks are, are health, are public health practitioners is something that comes up. So like other folks who really work with the community, having the competency and understanding cannabis and understanding everything that, that um, happens around that. Um, and the sustainability uh, is really, um, yeah, I think that came from more about the industry being more sustainable and the use of products and methods, but I'm not, I can't remember if we had more going on. I think that's kind of where we Well, <coughs> the directory we ranks, like my mind automatically goes there, and then a few meetings ago kind of realized, you know, there's a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then also small <coughs> businesses. Um, I think it was also led into economic sustainability as yeah. well. So you're just high level social equity because I think that one of the things I've talked with Dr. Knotts about extensively is also the idea that um, social equity, when we talk about people who maybe aren't necessarily involved in the cannabis industry, maybe may not even be consumers of cannabis, they're still impacted by yeah. some of the policies and the fallout from the legacy of the war on drugs. Same way cannabis tax or revenue from cannabis taxes can go towards 
workforce development. It can go towards um, uh, transition services from um, people who are formerly incarcerated, all those kind of things. It could also go towards clean drinking water in certain communities or roads. Or mm -hmm. Like there are a number of things that maybe don't automatically seem like they're related to cannabis or the cannabis industry, mm -hmm. but they are a part of social equity as well mm -hmm. and that we should really be you know, considering as a broader scope of what our recommendations should cover. Mm -hmm. So just want to put that out there too. Um, and in terms of research, it is too bad that Dr. Knox isn't here because I feel like she was really driving home PPR. the fact that. There was a question. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I don't know that can we re I don't want to interject. Please, no, it's okay. Because um, we were talking about just as looking through these, mm -hmm. I wanted to go back to research for a moment, but I don't want to take it off the topic. If that's no, I was talking about research. Oh, yeah, okay. Because okay. Um, I, I don't know if this fits in or if this is the purpose of what these guiding principles are trying to do, but um, so midway through that, I mentioned, um, it, it mentioned the economy without preemptively considering means to reduce potential harms. One area that I would like to see more either research or public education around, which maybe money could be spent on, is the research around harm to youth. Because I, I, my son is 18, he just ended his high school years, and he's talked to me a lot about the lack of real understanding among kids who think when it became legal, he came to me and he said, I hear it's legal, my friends are all talking about, therefore it's okay. And he was 14 at the time. And I was like, well, wait a second, what are your friends talking about? And it's it's very different between like a youth and a 21 year old, you know, by the body process and what happens with youth. And I think there's a lot of, I, I've struggled a lot to educate my son. I used to work in drug addiction, I'm a social worker despite all the education I've done, I've done with him, he still comes back and he's like, but it's really safe because it's natural and it's legal. It must be safe. And I'm like, what did we all talk, talk about? So I just, I don't think there's enough education that's out there and I think money could be spent on that. Yeah, I think we were talking about that. Yeah, and I think it's called the competency yeah. piece as right. well. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah you're, you're talking in schools, like just, just the public awareness, maybe tours to schools, so kids really understand, because despite what's out there, what's known and what's told to kids, yeah. and there's the still a lot of yeah. this that, since it's legal, it's okay. For parents it's, too, you know, they, they right. need to learn about it, because same thing, I don't want someone else teaching my kid about alcohol or cigarettes or whatever, so I'm going to talk to them about it, but educating parents to, right. to talk to their kids as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I think, again, mm -hmm looking at this more broadly, one of the things that Dr. Um, Knox and I encourage you to look her up for all, her, all our information, everybody's on this, yeah, is, is um, online and everything, but we've talked a lot about, um, you know, just like the physiology of cannabis and how just in general physiology in schools is not as adequate as it should be. Oh, so even just a basic understanding of health, the anatomy of the body, how body systems function with each individual person, right. this is something that we're aware of too. Is, lacking in schools and that again is one of those things that more holistically cannabis tax revenue and anything that's social equity yeah. related could go to funding that and making it stronger than what it is. So yeah. we're definitely aware. Mm -hmm. yeah, let me yeah. just tag on to that for a second because the endocannabinoid system that humans have, a lot of ma mammals have that too, mm -hmm. has been around thousands and thousands of years. So cannabis is an external phyto plant that has been narrative bad by Nixon and stuff like that. That's why we haven't come this far. It's still political. That's the problem, it's political. The plant is needed if your system ain't working, and that's what we're talking about. Educating medical peers who know nothing about this, about that system. Educating schools, schools are a key, and parents. Yeah. And I know um, that there is some curriculum um, in high school health classes that touch on cannabis and alcohol together um, and that they are um, with the legalization of cannabis making a push to let students know that this can still have some um, like effects on your development and 
that is why the legal age is 21, the same for alcohol. So I know that that curriculum is out there and in the health classes that all like freshman students have to take. What do you think about it? To some extent, it's just. Do, what do I think about what? The curriculum. I haven't looked over the curriculum, yeah. but I know that they are talking about it and having those conversations. Yeah. Um, I know that it comes that um, with the legal legalization of cannabis and every spring they do a big push on um, saying no still and mm -hmm. like talking about alcohol consumption and like um, operating vehicles and driving under the influence. So I know that um, at some schools they've lumped alcohol and cannabis together when they talk about them. Mm -hmm. Drug abuse, basically. Mm -hmm. It's drug abuse. That's, that's what they're talking about. I feel right. like the, the conversation with people who are users, non-users, um, all of those things needs to happen in sort of a circle because it, it yeah. is important to sort of hear this. I like, I'm you know, you can do all the research that you want because, you know, but we only have so much research right now because it's still schedule one. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you talk about that, like, I'm very glad to hear it. I also, like, thinking about this, I feel like we can't talk about the research without talking about the competency, without talking about the social right. ethics, without talking exactly. about the sustainability. Yeah. So yeah. it feels like a, so, like, almost like a circle sort of thing that has to occur because the thing is is that a lot of people who even use cannabis don't know how to use it correctly. Right. You know, and so it really is just we're all learning within this particular sort of whirlwind that we're in right now and I feel like the convert I always feel like people who don't use cannabis at all need to be so much in the conversation. Yeah. And yeah. not from a standpoint of, oh like this these are my worries, these are my concerns. But these are the things that I need heard. I need to hear you too. And what are the ways that we can have this be a sort of, because it's a plant, you know what I mean? Right. Be able to be used in the community and safely and well. Right. Well, and also, I mean, this is our opportunity to talk to you and you saying, how is cannabis affecting our kids' physiology? Yeah. Um, we can have it in our recommendations, in our research session. I mean, that's what we're here for today, right? We have these recommendations. We don't have that covered in research. so. Should we jump into that? Oh, where can we go? She uh, went to investigate. That kind of way goes back to what she was saying about 10 minutes ago, or asking about 10 minutes ago. Do we want to make this, do we want to bring in um, the war on drugs or drugs in general to this conversation? And then, I mean, but then it could get lost. And but if, I mean, if one, of our, if one of our recommendations is going to the commissioner is, hey, recommendation three is we'd like you guys to put some money towards how this cannabis is affecting it's physiology or you know that's just that's a narrow point there but we could make that a broader like hey let's contribute some of this this money to be designated to that could be recommendation three whatever however we want to word that well no, I've got I, a comment on that so you've got the first line right there that says comprehensively collect track and analyze local data to understand this stuff okay so that's what you're mentioning and every if this is huge for our data there's no comprehensive system in the United States, let alone in the state of Oregon. So that's part, I've talked to Dr. Rachel about that, that is the key to getting a lot of facts mm -hmm. and data. That's what we're after, facts and data, and not, not this myth. And so. Right, and one way that that's going to occur is through the retail um, experience that customers currently have. I mm -hmm. um, spoke with, I was at um, Greenhawk this morning, and there was a couple that were like as old as my parents, probably in their 60s, from Maryland who had just got here, they're here for five days, and it was the first time to uh, dispensary. And they were interested in edibles because they have a, from their experience all over their years is with the plant. And what we exchanged dialogue on was it being um, this scary thing and being like this sneaky thing, oh, I'm getting a dime bag. That's the energy that comes with that. Now it's open, you can go into a dispensary and she said, well, I want to feel like this. And we were like, oh, you might look into sativa, given the education behind that, because before you didn't know what was really growing out there in the black market. And most people have that it was anxiety or it made me trip or something like that from a certain period of time into the evolution in which is where we're at. So when we, we don't have adequate data in this moment, but in the last three years, it's gonna be that interface that that bartender or that person has in that retail experience to give some sort of feedback to the 
um, of, of how what the current effects of yeah. it is because you're yeah. working mm -hmm. with an 18 year old or mm -hmm. they're still curious and we before it was legal and it's still not legal kids are still getting a hold of it still smoking pot wherever they just might have a different effect because now we have the internet mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have more technology mm -hmm. that could give us more of this sort of mm -hmm. um, like I said the experience and they were the cutest people they walked out of there feeling they felt safe and yeah. they heard about our dispensary and they it was recommended to them and they got what they were going to experiment with and they were like we'll come back and tell you how it is and that's mm -hmm. I mean that's a good right. well so and one of the things that you touch on with that and um I don't know, like tourism kind of falls into a lot of these different categories, but it's something that we've talked about as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, again, how the city of Portland talks to, for example, um, an organization like Travel Portland. Mm -hmm. Like, is there something that the city could be doing in terms of recommending for tourists who come to our city who want to learn about this? Here's like a pamphlet, or here's like a, I don't know, mm -hmm. whatever, not yeah. a pamphlet, but like yeah. something that the city of Portland can like, if it's sponsor content, <laughs> if it's sponsor content that Travel Portland mm -hmm. yeah. can put on their website yeah. or some mm -hmm. organization like that, so that we're saying like, here's what you need to know about weed or cannabis yeah. and, yeah. exactly. And yeah. they were at the yeah. table in the very early stages. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Travel Portland was on the work group mm -hmm. um, of recommendations to uh, 2015. So there was yes. some, conversation they just yes. didn't put anything forward. And we do have it as one of our recommendations that we're going to be presenting. We just don't have a why statement and what the city can do about it yet. Well, I have an idea. So, like, in, are there like little meetings or town halls that are put on or community awareness sort of classes that could be held at community centers or, you know, just put here or wherever people, you know, and, the local school, you know what I mean, for pe the parents in the neighborhood to come to, like, also make, because that is part of the social equity, for parents to be armed with that information. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, and, and that, you know, being open to a wider, you know, just to be able to learn what, what happens if you've not had any cannabis? Mm -hmm. You know, what happens if you have this much cannabis? What happens... You know, what are these things like, what are terpenes? You know, like, how how close can somebody put their plant to my, you know, whatever. All these things. Like, just sort of getting a space where people can learn on a regular basis because it's sort of serving the community that has just been handed this huge industry. Just, well, you know, even medicine, where we don't right. even know how it's, you know, fully. Right. Yeah. But they not, don't even know how and they're I think, medicine. Not as a and that's a, that's a great idea, you know. And when our shop first opened, we used to host Know Your Bud classes for that specific reason because the community does not know, you know. And it's like, know what you're smoking. Know what the labs are. Know all the information because um, as bud tenders, they are on the front line right in touch directly to the community. And if the bud tender don't even know what terpenes are, then it's kind of like, you know, you like – Education is key. Like, we really have to get the word out there and start telling people that sativa indica has nothing to do with effects. Yeah. It has nothing to do with effects. So when you say sativa indica, you're describing the physiology of the plant. You're not even talking about the effects and what you're going to feel and experience. So it's really about getting the education out there so people can start making educated decisions, especially about dosing. Yeah. Because... There have been, and yeah, there have been so many, if you look at the data, the 911 calls or the ER visits and all that, or securing it from pets, like a veterinarian told me it has gone up like 400 and something percent just in um, pet, uh, <laughs> pet um, no, toxic pet consumption, and people don't know that pets can have a, um, it's not even because of the chocolate, it's, it's, um, it, they can have kidney failure, you know, it can, like, in dogs, too much cannabis, yeah, you know, and so, yeah, and people don't know that, they just think they're going to share another with the dog. Can I just point out? For everyone, recommendation six on the competency, utilize resources to lead conversations and or connections 
and ensure the city is setting the tone for an informed and engaged community discussion around yeah, cannabis. Damn, Three things the city can do about it. This is stuff we, 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 we're trying to come up with to like recommend to the city here. Is this covering what you guys are, are it's saying? It's right there, right. yep. I think both for tourists and for, commu for community. So maybe what, what we should do is go through the public with everything we've already done so we don't yeah. kind of hit these topics yeah. that we've already hit already. Well, so one thing I was going to say, and one thing too before I forget, <clears throat> Page numbers, like yeah. for real. Oh, yes. oh yes. here. No, page numbers. And then, okay, really quickly. So, yeah, just to add on to what they're saying, because I think it's really important. Are there existing, you know, community stuff going on we can plug into rather than doing it separate? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 the, we always talk about the health, public health practitioners. Are, are they already doing like workshops or reaching out to the community to educate them about mm -hmm. different things? Mm -hmm. um, Not in a cultural way. Right. 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 Um, yeah. Can we put a pin in that and talk about that right at the end? I want to go yeah. through everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last thing I want to say too, because it hasn't been mentioned, um, Travel Oregon, I don't know. I know all their hangups about we have federal funding. We don't know if we want to talk about cannabis. It's one of the, the state's biggest tourism drivers. And I think mm. that was that two? Was it the last meeting or two meetings ago when um, Congressman Bloom and I was field representative came in? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we should really be pressing him on mm -hmm. too is travel organ needs to like shit or get off the pot, you know, kind of situation yeah, yeah. because we need them to be a part of this conversation too. So I think that that you can talk about tourism. Really oh, sure, go ahead. Weekly could be another option. There must be a local mm -hmm. rep that um, yeah, represents weekly. There's just yeah. so much information already out there. Yeah. That it's I hear that too, but especially the but but specifically like travel Portland, travel Oregon, their uh, tourism sure. agencies that exist to promote travel to this state and people to come to this state. Leafly, I think that they can help in some ways, but they're another entity that we don't really have any immediate you know line to, I guess, or whatever. So. Yeah, but they are they, and when we talk about sponsored content and that kind of thing, they could be involved in the conversation too. Well, and the original. Um, makeup of Seapot did include Michelle from Travel. Yes. Travel Portland. Travel Portland. Okay. But see, I mean, Travel Portland. At least they have a few articles about cannabis. Like Travel Oregon is just a bomb all together, and you know that that needs to change. Um, so why don't we just move on to recommendation number one? I guess we kind of already talked about that. But like the media, uh, social equity. Does anybody from the from Teapot want to speak to how we arrived at this recommendation? I was gonna uh, say. I, I mean, need to just jump in. I, you know? I, I was probably what, one of the most heated people about up. this thing. I, I just, <laughs> just because you know, I, I sat on the original 2017 cannabis tax allocation steering committee, and when that audit report came out earlier this year, I, I was like, absolutely floored. So, yeah. I know over the last several months, we've actually. Uh, different from previous CPOT terms, this year we decided to go ahead and, and form uh, subcommittees, and one of the subcommittees did focus on on the, the tax allocation um, social equity piece. Um, so we, we discussed a lot of these recommendations. The three things that, that kind of came up were, were really the, the major priorities that we thought would be best use and direction. Uh, based on you know feedback that we've gotten here at the board level, the just other discussions with community members. Um, so I mean, there there could be a lot more that can be done, uh, but I think these are probably the, the three major focus areas that I think CPOT in general felt would be probably the easiest to be able to push through. I think, but would also make the most impact. I'd be curious to hear from the from the 
the public members here if, you know, any comments on kind of the, the three major uh, recommendations that we had under the tax allocation piece. Oh, quick questions. Can you remind me of the categories? One's public safety. Um, there's three categories on the bullets under three things the city can do about Public safety, social equity, mm -hmm. or I mean the... Oh, you mean just like the original, the, the, oh, the uh, ordinance three. established? The overall the three. three, yes, yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so drug and alcohol, Drug and alcohol education, education? Right. I think is the... Oh, I thought it was also rehab. Uh, I don't know if it's actually rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but the state level. But, but drug and alcohol education um, uh, and prevention, I believe, was part of that mm -hmm. definition as well. Um, uh, public safety, traffic safety, um, and then um, uh, community reinvestment through um, economic development, small business development for women and minority-owned small businesses, um, um, other avenues for community reinvestment, specifically in communities that have been most impacted um, by uh, disproportionate enforcement of cannabis laws. Mm -hmm. So to follow up on that, then this, the grants that are recommended out of the CPUC committee or a small part of that number three, and they're not the whole thing, right? Right, right. right. Okay. Yep. okay. Right. okay. Right. And it was workforce yeah. development was in there. Did you say that? And yeah. Then, workforce development yeah. is part of that as well, yes. Right. And, uh, and uh, homeless. Expungement and uh, homeless. Yeah. homeless uh, so. <laughs> I don't know how they categorized in there, though. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. um, and I can provide you guys with an um, overview of the, oh. the um, cannabis Grants, um, probably in the audit framework. The <coughs> it was expungement, um, workforce development, and reentry and re re housing reentry re right. services. Re um, and it just was in brackets of what the reentry services look like. Right, right. But That's those right. are Thank flexible you. categories mm -hmm. as a sub category, as a subset of that third um, area right, right. allocation mm -hmm. area that had right. been identified through the ordinance, the city ordinance that created the 3% local tax. Mm -hmm. So the stuff that is written into the city ordinance, those category, those allocation categories are the drug education and prevention, um, mm -hmm. the uh, public, safety. public safety, traffic mm -hmm. safety, mm -hmm. um, and um, community reinvestment into economic development, small business development, um, um, and other community programs that benefit communities, specifically benefit communities that have been most impacted by mm -hmm. enforcement. And so are they all equally uh, split in terms of how the money? You should read the audits. No. Oh, yeah. You'll oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, what, did the council want it to be distributed that way, or did it end so up? So that <laughs> was not defined. Yeah. Uh, and that's part that's of the problem. And, it, yeah. Yeah. and that's part of the big problem is it got dumped into the general fund at right. a certain point. If it didn't get allocated, I can't remember that whole The thing. audit revealed that um, approximately 15% of the total revenue from the local tax was going into the community reinvestment through economic development and investment into these specific communities. And the whole rest of it was going to Portland okay. Police Bureau and uh, Portland Bureau of Transportation. Thanks for that. Yeah, I knew right. generally. 79% 79, 79 right. went to, to public safety. Yeah, and and, and right. they couldn't, they couldn't there is a one pager for the audit too, so you don't oh, have to necessarily okay. read the whole thing. There is a one one pager that really just kind okay. of packs a punch. Um, yeah. yeah. How are you all feeling hmm. about these three? I think that we can, um, as a group, we can continue to do wordsmithing around the why statements. But um, how are you feeling about the three things the city can do about it? Action items. Which one? Um, uh, your recommendation sorry, one. Oh, um, okay. Social equity recommendation one. Okay. Right, no, no. Page that recommendation is for no. 50 50 percent of that three percent to go to the social equity program, not fifteen, which was what had happened, right? right. And Correct. that's why we kind right. of attacked that to some right. degree. Right. Right. Um, so. Um, so the first recommendation, the first action item 
um, you're recommending is to have set percentages right. instead of this um, unidentified mm -hmm. allocation mm -hmm. um, to these three areas. I think so too, but then I also think even when you do that, th this is again where it comes down to specifying like at the end of the day, who is this money? Like where does it trickle down to? Because my understanding is like when people say like, oh money went to the to P bots, the Bureau of Transportation for Vision Zero stuff, well the people who actually do Vision Zero are the Portland Police Department. Mm -hmm. So again, right. you know, the so way it need, there needs to be set percentages but also transparency about even within that percentage, it might be this bureau or this organization, but the person who's actually going to be handling the money or doing whatever with it is this. Right, entity. and that's what gotcha. the auditor's so report found lacking is where right. all that money went. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough just to have the percentages, it's also being accountable yeah. to who has that money at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As I recall, the conversation regarding the third one um, really dealt with the whole idea of ensuring greater levels of transparency and accountability so that, um, because I, as I understand it, one, one thing I've heard again and again in meetings over the past month is that CEPA is, like it or not, just here to make recommendations. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, this is not a policy setting mm -hmm. right. process so much as it is an oversight process. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the third recommendation um, that could be you know, implemented would, uh, as I said, create more transparency and accountability so that people know where is the money going, what mm -hmm. is it being spent for. Yeah, I think that what we, or at least my understanding is that there's different levels of community advisory boards, and because we have a lot of members here who would be directly impacted by policy, maybe in a favorable way that we can. It seems the critical word there is the underlying mm -hmm. word permanent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and empowered. And Kimmy, this is where I'm ignorant. I want to know what it means when it says, and will be held to standards of public meeting law. I mean, mm -hmm. we're being held to standards of public meeting law in this meeting, are we not? Mm -hmm. um, well, we, we had to go through a whole mm -hmm. process to be public officials to be well, part of the right. Canada's policy oversight team. So is that what that means? Does this right. uh, suggest a greater level of standard? Um, so. The third point, I mean. Uh, yeah, I think that, um, no, I, I think that this group is held to a high standard for public meetings law, um, and um, that may be kind of a, a redundant statement for any board that is created for the city. This is where I'm learning as a citizen. Thank you. But it, and it, it's new, right? I mean, it's relatively new that they're pushing the public official training on these type of boards. Yes, we. Um, <laughs> It is new that we are creating some um, consistency and accountability about it. It is not new that it has always been a um, requirement. So to your point, um, when you were saying that uh, making this committee like permanent because there are stakeholders, what if we take out the stakeholders or the people who would benefit from policy and then that way it would just be community um, be my second suggestion. Community to put based. In here. Yeah. There has to be some sort of accountability. If that means that the people who, that wouldn't be me because I don't own anything, but <laughs> the people who do have some sort of conflict of interest, yeah. like maybe we have to be the people who sit in the chairs back yep. there while, yep. you know, people who don't have that. Um, yeah, I would have know, to agree with that. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah, and it could be a both and. I mean, CPOT could continue to exist in this capacity mm -hmm. and advise, mm -hmm. um, and there is this other layer that then becomes right. developed. I think mm -hmm. that's what you were recommending yeah. here, yeah. is to create this other body that has um, uh, more decision, direct decision-making power, mm -hmm. reports directly mm -hmm. to council, mm -hmm. um, like, the Portland Children's Levy or, or mm -hmm. some of these other funds mm -hmm. um, that report directly to the council mm -hmm. and have decision-making power over the allocation of, um, of that larger pot of um, cannabis tax revenue. So yeah. where can we add that in? Yeah, here? Here. You just said decision-making. Mm -hmm. So that's different than yes. what this does. This is yes. advisory. Right, yes. we're saying like yes. so decision-making in addition here. to yeah. Right. So that's a different. Yeah. That's, that's what we're about. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the OCC yeah. board. Yeah. I mean, there's people on there that own the 
one person that's family owns the largest alcohol distribution in the state, and another one who owns restaurants, it's, you know, and they're allowed to make policy. Um, so how did this, no, like the OCC Board of Directors. Commissioner. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, you know, so I, I don't know why it's different in this circumstance. <laughs> a lot of us cannabis business owners were asked to be here to, to kind of help guide it and I don't want to say educate, like we know more, but um, just to bring a, a, another perspective because it's the business that we're in. And, um, John's point. Yeah. Well, like she said, this could yeah. still continue, yeah. Yeah. but it would just be a decision yeah. making mm -hmm. yeah. that leaves, yeah. so it's non biased. Yeah. Right. You know? Um, and there, like there, there are avenues for people who have serious. direct <laughs> conflicts of interest to participate in those other decision making or more empowered or quasi judicial bodies. Um, <coughs> they're just more complicated in, in how they can participate. If they mm -hmm. do it out for votes or don't participate in certain discussions. Um, so the, it, it wouldn't be that you know people who have the expertise or are connected to the industry couldn't participate at all. Yeah. I mean, I think that having that secondary body brings on a whole new set of red tape challenges, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that we shouldn't aim to have that. Yes. Because I think it's important. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would like to see that added um, into our recommendations. Uh, document as well. So, do you want to move on to number two? Yeah, I think we should move on to number two. Um, so, this uh, sort of brings up one of the blind spots that we talked about for this body, where we do not have anyone who represents someone who, or I don't think we do, someone on here who has a formal, who has a background. In but just pointing out that that was one of the things that we yeah. talked about. You no, know, like parole or the... There's anyone who has like some... Well, that works too, yeah. I guess. But also... I mean, people that have I, I know within that system. Yeah. Correct. Right, that was one of the things Questions. that um, Commissioner Hardesty also pointed out to me when I talked to her about this yeah, too. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. It's nice to take do you want to take a look at the three things yeah. the city can do about it? that we can do the three for a reason? Just no, and so I have kept past versions of this. Um, um, I was um, proposing that you limit it to three for um, right. readability and right. also actionability. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what I tried to do was maintain um, maintain the bulk of what you guys had um, listed as options, and if there were ones that could could be folded into each other that were close enough to each other, um, I collapsed them into one and, and wrote a new sentence that contained both pieces. Okay. Cool. Um, so, but that is another thing that that I would like input from you guys, if there's something that you really wanted on here that you don't see represented, um, please let me know. Or if you want it to be four or five. Um, but it, at this point, um, you may have to make some kind of tough decisions about how much you can put in. We had mentioned, um, since there's the ban the box on job applications, about on housing applications. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's been a long going conversation with um, policy change 
in that in that sector. That's actually my day to day work when it comes to um, with housing. So I uh, recall a year and a half ago they were opening up a bigger conversation about banning the box off of the housing application, but into what extent of that? So again, it cannabis being legalized opened up a convert opens up the conversation for what has taken place in the last 30 years when it comes to drug offenses and what portions and just drug control in general. So looking at it in that perspective would be a good um, opening. Um, under recommendation four for the same category, um, it says prioritize coordinated support for reentry housing for those formerly incarcerated due to cannabis. Do you think that um, you guys, that, do you want to add a uh, down the box for housing language there? Yes. I just want it. <laughs> That's about drug convictions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's something that already, yeah. it doesn't already for employment, but not for housing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Office, office so. just do just do some one on three there to take a look at that or something. Or you know, they, they don't, don't have, have enough data on that. But I do know that. I mean, that was one of the. That was, was one looking of the things. Data, or they were looking at data to see like what kept people from housing, mm -hmm. and so one app has like all that data. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious. Is daily? Maybe. I mean, it sounds like it sounds like you daily. I'll find out. Um, just because I know Tyrone, and I know he was, he he doesn't have like. Um, I don't know the exact applications of it. But I think they were looking the data the, the data shows that people are applying for housing. Yeah. What the barriers are. Like right. if it's if it's credit score, if it is yeah. you know, credit. so there's data out there about what's preventing people from accessing housing. All right, we're we should probably should move on to the next thing, recommendation three. There was a comment last uh, conversation when the senator was here around expungement not being as easy here because uh, if you're incarcerated for any drug related charge, mm -hmm. it's, right. it's a blanket drug related charge. Mm -hmm. It's true, this isn't. Yeah. Well, they changed the uh, 90 or 90s or 2000s or whatever. So going back is complicated, but there's a date certainly going forward. It's going to be easier. It's 2004. It's 2005. 2005, something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 now it's more spelled out. But you're right. Before that, it wasn't. So older convictions um, require funding. That's the bottom right. line. But, but um, disaggregating cannabis from other possession charges is one of the complicated things. Yeah, yeah that's what I, because I, I had done some research on on automatic expungement in Oregon and because right. of how things are listed, it's very difficult to do that here right. in Oregon. Whereas in California, they're doing it right now. No, you're right, I think they're, yeah, they're was, looking to start a pilot program in Illinois yeah, what too. What I also understood so, from that conversation was that every DA in every county can treat it differently. Yeah. Is that not correct? Well, it's it's a, that's what yeah. is one of the problematic issues in the state. See, before, so before two, two, one, 2005, people charged for, for drug trying, for cannabis was possession of a controlled substance, mm -hmm. Schedule 1. It never differentiated what it was. Right. So the data for our so, state doesn't break that down. Yeah. Yeah, I have to like go into the notes or try to find it. Or the police report, where uh, yeah, sometimes they which who mention. knows. Yeah. Well, they can, yeah. Go, yeah. they can go into the records, and that's why you have to request it, and then they can see the difference in two thousand five and forward. But yeah. you're right, the data 
hey, we're, our state's really behind on data stuff. Yeah, point. for yeah. sure. Isn't yeah. the expungement really difficult in the state also, or maybe just in general, because they attach it to like weapon stuff as soon as you get pulled over for that the traffic Whereas light? Is it attached to other convictions? Yeah, yeah. they yeah. attach yeah. it all yeah. together. And then you try to expunge it. So maybe that's, a, maybe that's an ask to yeah. the feds to give us some money to fix this if we really <laughs> want that data. Yeah. Okay. Let's just get the Sam. 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 You're going to ask him. Right? I'm going to ask him. Everyone, can I jump in for a second? Please. Yes. Yeah. Hi. So um, just talking about the expungement stuff, I, I'm looking at two and four, and I think recommendation four actually has more directed um, things that we can do about it than three does. And I also think when we're talking about expungement, I mean, that two does. So when we're talking about expungement, I think we really are talking about a systemic problem because of the way charges are stacked when you're arrested for drug crime. So there are, I know, Oregon um, groups of attorneys who do work on expungement cases, and they're able to provide documentation of how much it would cost to expunge the cases when they are more complicated, like when you do have to pull the files and the records and go through and really um, look at those cases. But from my conversations with them over the years, it seems like some of the best things we can do for people is addressing these housing issues and facilitating you know, work groups, reintegrating into communities, even helping the families of people who have been incarcerated. Because systemically, if your parents were incarcerated, then you also, as a child of parents or grandparents, are going to have you know issues reintegrating society, less money for schooling, um, less stable home environments. So there's a lot that can go into it. I think overall, other than just expungement, because expungement can be super difficult in Oregon. So maybe if we can pull in one of those groups and find out for sure um, what would be most useful. It would. I'm sorry. Oh no! No, keep going. Where Nobody said anything. Okay. Okay. So I think we, we really need to find that out. And I think the most effective thing that I see in all these things we can do about it is um, is specifically putting money towards those groups that are already doing expungement because they know what they're doing, they do it already, um, and they know how to keep doing it. But of course, you know, a lot of that stuff is pro bono. So those attorneys, you know, need funding to be able to pull records and, you know, court fees and all that stuff. So I think, you know, the most important thing we can really pull into that is funding for those community involvement groups that already work with people who have drug charges. And maybe that goes into our broader conversation about drug charges in general, but since we're focused on cannabis, I think that they really offer a wealth of services to the community that we can specifically tell Portland, you know, these are important, you know, nonprofits that we want to see, you know, money going towards, you know, other than these are kind of, you know, very broad, um, statements of social equity in this context. I think. Do you think that then um, underneath recommendation two, the second bullet could get way more specific? Definitely. I, I mean, that's really the one that I had um, the most issue with because it's so broad. We just talked about tax allocation and then it, it just says, oh, social equity and put money, money towards reinvestment. But what we're really talking about is the communities that were infected, but affected by the war on drugs. We're talking about people who were formerly incarcerated, but I think we need to be very specific about that and yeah. not just broadly social equity because we're talking about a very specific community. Um, and I don't want to see it get like overwhelmed by, you know, all the other social equity issues because we're, we've addressed those in other recommendations. Yeah. Great. Can I just follow up on that quick? I think it was really good. Uh, the person that you want to contact, maybe to have him come here, is uh, Jeff Rhodes, because he gave a talk to us when we were down in Salem at Lobby Days, and he was talking about the same So He's got data on this, so we don't have to recreate the wheel. Okay. And I think that's where you might want to start. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Jeff Rhodes actually the attended, uh, attended one of the early tax allocation steering committees and was very informative, but also supportive of what we were trying to do at that time. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what, what his opinion is two years later. He works for Governor Brown. So he yeah. is, a, is oh, the yes. like cannabis point of contact for Governor Brown, as well as now what gambling and something else. He's got the vices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So real quick, so before we move on to ask the tax, 
portion of it? Oh, allocation? Sure. Who is it that decides what portion goes where? City Council. City Council. And that happens during the, the petition for Measure 91. No, I mean, but the second, not, not the top three that the okay. city had to explain yeah, city for their 3% tax, yeah. but when we gave X amount to the cops last year, oh, that next amount to here, next month there, who, who decided what those numbers were? That right. was a conversation that took place and a decision that was made by city council during the course of the regular budgeting process. It wasn't a separate um, conversation. So that, that was the whole city, the city council as a whole? Yes, the group of them during the budgeting process. Um, <coughs> so there isn't a, a lot of information about how the conversation, um, how that number was landed on exactly. Oh, we can we not be able to look at minutes or anything. Yeah, I think that's the thing about the. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about the audit report is this yeah, like exactly. it's completely it's unclear. unclear. Oh, I was being facetious yeah. because I know there was no right. transparency at all. If my recollection is correct. It's been a while, but it, um, the the documentation of the conversation was pretty spare. Mm -hmm. And can we keep in mind that? When legalization and it became recreational in the city, it was under Amanda's Prince Bureau, um, and there were different people. Charlie Hills was the mayor, so mm -hmm. just as Chloe transitioned into her position, it, nothing was being happy. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so if we. I just think about that because I've kind of been spotting from here and there from a while, and I just I'm thinking about that when you're saying that budget, it wasn't. That was yeah. probably the focus. Like nothing, Cabinet this had kind of went silent for a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. A few different people transitioned out of the position and came in, and here we are. This is like a clean slate, yeah. mm -hmm. I would say. Good point. Yeah, and I think adding to that too is my understanding is that when City Council, City Council always thought, oh, this is going to be a revenue to to sub to supplement mm -hmm. yeah. other yes. activities within the city, right? Yeah. They were never like, oh, we're gonna. Yeah, social equity is part of it, but this is actually just another revenue source for us to like supplement, you know, stuff in other bureaus. Oh, yeah. So, I I'll mean, I think articles. there needs to be like an overall message that no, actually, we need to kind of change that overall. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because that's why the police took it. They went, oh, it's public safety, mm -hmm. it's drugs, so I can give it to the police. Yeah, and, and that I mean, was early on. Yeah. But and a lot of that was because there was all that shock and awe and people freaking right. out about what our communities were going to turn into because pot's legal now. Right, right. right. Chicken yeah. littles. And so they, they made it <laughs> they feel better by saying, well, we're going to give more money to police to protect right. your communities because these crazy stoners are going to destroy it. Right. Yeah. 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 Police have an opposite view of that, by the way. They don't like yeah. that. So okay. uh, maybe with what's left of the time. Yeah. Um, do you want to focus on one or two that we just don't have a lot for yet? And kind of see if we could brainstorm info for the why statement just to help give me a running start on crafting some of that? Yeah. And I can we still want to leave a little bit of time for public comments mm -hmm. at the end <laughs> too. So um, what I think uh, so, recommendation six on rec uh, oh, uh, sorry competency. That was one that we were talking about, and we had a lot of public involvement there on. That one would be a good one to get a why statement and bounce it around with the public, don't you think? Question mark. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So that's the one you brought up before. With, uh, yeah, with somebody brought up. No. Sorry, it was competency, no. and it was which one you said? Recommendation, uh, recommendation six. <laughs> Utilize resources so. to lead conversations and/or connections, and ensure the city is setting the tone mm -hmm. for informed and engaged community discussion around cannabis. Mm -hmm. So one thing that um, that occurred to me is that because one of these categories is drug drug and alcohol education and treatment programs, like. It's not probably not, but it's not clear to me that there is any of that those dollars. And this is this is aside from the social mm -hmm. equity piece of it. Oh wait, no, yeah, or the piece that you were using for grants, I think. Like this, right. the drug like this, yeah, yeah, this part they yeah. just like, oh, we're just going to use this to fund this one thing. It all went to Portland Police Bureau. Right, but it's like we're. I mean, I'm hearing like there need there needs to be more public education around cannabis, mm. and there needs to be more of a public education campaign. So. I think maybe there could be a recommendation that a portion of these dollars go directly into a public education campaign for 
can have this. And just since that's what they're intended that. for. Absolutely. What's that? Uh, just as an example of that, has anyone been able to read the Surgeon General's advisory on uh, marijuana and pregnant women and youth that came out two weeks ago? Uh, I mean, no. no. But, you know, Oregon's done their own thing in that regard, so it's probably the same, right? So I'm, I'm not sure. Don't smoke, don't do it. Because, yeah. and that's false. That's false medical knowledge. So that's the problem. There's a certain general, that I, and they, don't get me started. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested. In that. I'll we'll talk about it. Yeah. It's not good. So, general, yeah. mm -hmm. that's all I can say. So, what can you can you give us? Why you want a why statement? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think you you all identified that it's really important to have a why statement underneath each of these recommendations to really um, drive home the significance and the urgency of this particular recommendation. Um, and so um, it's helpful to me if you guys can give me a running start on crafting those um, and then it also you know comes from you so, so part of the why statement is because the public is not informed well enough or educated well enough right that's part of the why statement yeah and right now just even just kind of brainstorming phrases like that is mm -hmm. really helpful to me because then I can kind of right. you know well, what did you you said at the yeah, beginning that it. was really on point about like the need for people who don't engage with cannabis yeah um, so, I mean like I think that's kind of at the heart of yeah. this well I can't remember how I said it y'all I just remember that, <laughs> we that just, you know you know yeah. non-consumers um, just the general community I think is that that's the pretty much thing. And also, too, we're coming off of, you know, essentially, I mean, this this might be decades or of this particular war on drugs, this particular portion of it, but we're talking about hundreds of years of, like, sort of cropping down on this plant and certain people using it. And, you know, so we're talking about coming off of years and years of not being able to research it on a wider scale. That does not mean that the current body of knowledge that we have around it is, is untrue. So we're just, we're just coming off of prohibition. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can do prohibition differently than prohibition was done with alcohol, because clearly that didn't work out well. Um, yeah, no, so you know, we're talking about just creating a whole other sort of body of work to support this plan. And, and our engagement, the community. Yeah. Yeah. I think that OLCC should definitely have, they have no, like their, their website right now and have been, it's just external for like, nothing's happening for three years with them. Yeah. So there's no updated real information. Yeah. They're regulating this, the, this plant and so. If they're gonna take control of it, they need to yeah. actually, right. you know, they we have to be on metric like this. Mm -hmm. Then they need to be teaching the public about yeah. cannabis. That yeah. doesn't yeah. make they, any sense. Yeah. yeah, they came out with like one, educate before, recreate before you educate. That's, I remember yeah. that. That was just like, that, was, that very beginning stages right. of, of it, that was about it with education. I know that there's, the Oregon Health Authority, there's also Multnomah County, so there's parties that are speaking against and for. We're speaking for, it sounds like, and these are others that are like, nah, that's shit. Money. But, yeah, and so how do we, mm -hmm. you know, maybe not at this moment, but to think about that in OLCC, be accountable. Right. You know, and I think that there also is a common thread, though, too, between all of the different stakeholder groups in that I think that, that a commonality is, is not wanting to see people get sick mm -hmm. from um, using cannabis because they haven't been given the information that they need, not wanting youth to, um, um, to, to use before they're 21. I mean, that this is an, a, an adult, a product for adults, a recreational product for adults. Medicine may have a different kind of um, there's a different conversation around medicinal use, but recreational use specifically, um, I think there are some common commonalities. I think commonalities. it's the same 
conversation to a degree because when we talk about proper dosing, we're still talking about medicine. We're talking about, oh, I want to get high in that particular sense. We're still talking mm -hmm. about proper dosing. So right. I, I personally feel like there needs to be a stronger medical program, you know, a set aside, totally yeah. separate. That's just me. Um, because I think the medicine is always going to inform the recreational. Because, like, even like all of the underground stuff that people are doing, like you're you're getting your information from these sort of spaces that need to be really honed in. And if they're going to be, I think that if you're going to take responsibility for it, if you say that okay, we're going to shepherd this thing, then you need to actually shepherd it. So I also think one of the recommendation needs to be, you know, holding these bodies accountable. Or pressing forward with the idea that there needs to be a separate entity that just does cannabis, yeah. which mm -hmm. is what it seems like would benefit everybody at the end of the day, yeah. so instead of having separate alcohol entity. in the yeah. yes. yes. state. I mean, yeah. at the state level, yeah, yeah. like the yeah. same way California yeah. has right. its own right. office or bureau that deals with cannabis across the state, so do you. Well, there already is one, but it's not funded. Right. Well, or okay, so there, that's that true. Yeah, yeah. so there, that too. And then also, just to the point you were saying about. I forgot exactly what you just said, but it brought to mind that Dr. Knox is always saying that the only difference between medicating and recreational is intent, basically, right. so it is medicine. Right. And if it's yeah. true, most people would, are going to be yeah. using it medically. Right, like I, right, that's I've true. I've only been working at Oregon's Finance for, like, since April, yeah. and I've seen people come in, oh, yeah, now I have these pains. Right. I have a headache. So, you know, it switches so fast that I don't think that we can separate the conversation no. so definitively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's just why. So we feel like yeah. the why statement needs to include that we don't think there's enough education mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. being from a point of view of the city of Portland. Well, there's not enough education, but there's also the city of Portland is one player in a series of players that are working almost against each other in some ways, mm -hmm. right. which is why the, the okay. lack of information or disinformation is so. So that's, that's, that's another part of the why is that they need to come together. Look at yeah. yeah. hey, real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on what you just hey, said. Hey, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Go. For the why statement for recommendation six, I'm glad you mentioned Dr. Knox. I think that um, their family, the Knox family, um, have done a lot for PR for cannabis. And yeah. I think that the why statement needs to reflect us, focus on de demystifying, you know, stereotypes about cannabis users, about really pulling um, the shame and, you know, the, the lack of um, awareness about what people who use cannabis are like. Mm -hmm. um, so a PR team, a crisis management team, and um, for the why statement, I think that that's, um, major thing about even converting cannabis users to ambassadors for people who can talk about cannabis is just um, talking about the shame um, and just the confusion about what cannabis culture is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with it. And so it, it, you could just make these into why statements by adding other <coughs> words, basically. I think what you got in the bullet points, mm -hmm. promotion of city C5 cannabis grant work through media, social media, media and social media, to engage, to educate, to increase knowledge. And the next one might be, because we're participating and you know, partnering and stuff, to gain network, to gain information that's not local. I mean, that's part of the problem. We don't have the schools, the academics, anybody involved in this stuff. There's no national effort. It's starting to be a global effort working down into the states up. So we got this huge gap until that gets closer. That's what we need to do. We need to send people to conferences, like the science conference that was just in town. That's a, that's a good source. We were lucky it was right here, but there's other places around. And so to do these things, that's the why to me. Why are we doing this? To educate ourselves, to share what we learn. When I go around other parts of the country talking about social equity, I point to Portland. I don't think there's a lot of activity. In other, they're all kind of looking for stuff I said talk to. You know, <laughs> we're doing stuff here. Yeah. You know, you got to kind of look at it. So I don't know so, what the name of it is. Sorry, but there's actually like an international cannabis equity conference happening right now in Bogota, Colombia. Is what I understand. Oh, Colum so, yeah, Colombia is really yeah. going guns to really yeah. do some things. So yeah. they're bringing back uh, 
people that really know how to grow and they've got labs. Uh, a friend of mine's running a lab, so they're really, really yeah. at the forefront. But um, yeah. so if I might, I just want to make sure that um, I captured things. Um, some of the key things that I heard um, were um, de demystifying um, and destigmatizing um, both uh, use and uh, the, the culture uh, around the culture and history around campus use and users, um, that there's a, a need for public education, both for consumers, non-consumers, youth, parents, travelers, um, mm -hmm. travelers, travelers, thank you. Um, and one thing that really um, s stood out for me, two things, one is that the concept that we're transitioning from decades of prohibition into this new space, um, and that um, me use the um, term shepherd, but I feel like in government we use the term steward. Oh, we're we're steward. You know, oh, okay. um, oh, yeah. I knew what you meant. I wrote that steward. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but that that, that we have a responsibility of stewardship. Both, you know, oftentimes in government we're being told we have to be good stewards of, of public funds, but really, this group has kind of tasked with helping the city be good stewards of policy as yeah. well. Um, and how can we as a city really live up to our responsibility to steward these policies into, um, into being and to the benefit of, of um, all of the stakeholders involved um, and in a responsible way. So I feel like um, those are some really good pieces that I can um, fold into a wise statement. Um, if that sounds like I captured those. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think in the interest of time, if, if I guess if people just email you with yes. whatever yes. they money mm -hmm. has um, anything else that we didn't get to discuss or yeah. you know recommendations yes. to email. The <coughs> CPOP yeah. members should prepare themselves for an actual homework assignment to be, to be sent to you, please. With, yeah. with, a, with a deadline because we now have an October 10th date of wanting to engage in um, additional kind of more in-depth conversation. Um, so uh, I will need a little bit more from you all on shaping um, those last pieces and those last wise statements. Quick yeah. question uh, on the sustainability, the last page here, looks like not the last page, second to last, but it's, it looks like it's cut off list of reasons. Am I missing something on that last page? On the bottom of sustainability recommendation two. Oh. It says many of these groups are vertically integrated and, so, and then there's no. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to finish that one. I'm no, you did. You sent me a long list. Oh, did yeah, I? Yeah, I, yeah, um, yeah. Maybe I already did. No, okay. I, was trying to, um, I was trying to integrate those lists of reasons Thank into the why statement. Okay, I'll help with that too because yeah. I still have some things I want to add. Okay. You know, to that whole sustainability boom bam. But. Yeah, because I remember that conversation. It's really important because that's the economic development and the communities of color that this needs to tie into, not just this is create opportunities. Yeah, we need to kind of stand alone. What do you call it? Yeah. Economic development commission of the city. Yeah. Going, we're going to do this for cannabis. We're going to do this for wine. Whatever, you know, startups. Yeah. I will also take a look at all of these bullet points around three things the city can do about it with a, a, um, an eye on specifically specificity. Can we get more specific based on the conversations you guys have already had about some of these bullet points yeah. of action items? I mean, I think that that's the key at the end of the day, you know, is um, specificity because broad strokes don't serve anybody well. Mm -hmm. And at least if we're on the record with, well, the community advisory board said this and we gave you the steps, that's yeah. a way to hold people accountable mm -hmm. to you. That's so kind of at the beginning of the yeah. conversation we were talking about maybe making the definition, giving them a little bit more punch. Mm -hmm. Because I, I feel like we're a lot of these things, and not that it's necessarily they were intended to do this, but I feel like it's just given Given the people who gave away all our tax money to the cops, an easy out from dealing yeah. with a lot of these issues. Yeah. So, I mean, let's put it in their face and just be real and say what's up versus, oh, you know, boom, and then we're out of here and it's going to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for pretending to listen.
Um, so last question about the October 10th day. So how will you go about selecting where we have that? Or is that going to be something you're going to send out to the borough? Where do you guys want to have it? Where do you want to start with Charles Jordan Community Center? Or do you want to? I don't know where it is. Sorry, you have to help me. It's uh, North Portland. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Like a good access to public transportation as well as parking. Or Dishman, maybe Dishman. I'm okay with that. I mean, yeah, I, I was out in New Columbia today and worked to. Uh, sometimes it's challenging to get to the person that you would like to talk to about facilitating. And I brought up cannabis. And it's like, well, it's federal, so there's there's this loops and holes and, and process, but um, that I, I, I recommend that community because there's there's a lot of people that live in that community that could possibly benefit from the information or yeah. seeing folks. Um, they can also put it in their newsletter, the um, uh, home forward, so that folks know that that's something that's going to be happening in the community. And then I think that any of the um, the rec centers would be good places for people because there's usually parking. Yeah. There's usually space that for, to host like food and, and things like that. that people, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also wonder. I mean, I don't know about like state centers whether or not that would be allowed just because of the the government. What's that? Or whatever. I like church faith centers. Any sort oh. of like because I just think about you know a lot of. Yeah. The things that we're talking about, there's still a disconnect between people of faith yeah. and like knowing about some of this stuff. I don't see them yeah. on the yeah. like like Christian. Christian. They should also be on a stakeholder list, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I think the only, uh, I'll look into I'll look into it and see. Um, so how about I, um, I will send you guys one or two options and you guys just let me know which one you want to start with and I'll make the resolution and start putting together some um, uh, public okay. uh, engagement Okay. Yeah, what were the other things that you had up on the board? Um, <coughs> about public engagement? Yeah, other so um, one is a, a kind of a broader public survey that would be um, pushed out through an email blast as right. well as on okay. the website. Um, and then a more targeted um, sharing of the actual draft with um, uh, people, community organizations that have okay. um, already kind of engaged with us as well as ones that we would like to be engaging with this issue. Um, and then uh, and then the public, okay. having the meetings out, yeah. uh, the two or three meetings We're out We're gonna do all three, is that what we decided? Yeah, I will be doing the first two for the most part, <laughs> and then um, and then you guys uh, will pick some dates for the other pieces in October. Okay. Uh, and those will be weekends and evenings. And you're also going to be coordinating with whatever or Civic Life has to reach mm -hmm. out to partners. To yes, them, they the have a four thousand email mm -hmm. strong lister okay. for Civic Life, so. Well, that way. So, and I know at the end of the meeting we typically talk about any upcoming events, and as I understand, uh, Commissioner Udali will be speaking to Orca, to the Oregon yep. Retailers Monday. Association on uh, Monday evening. Monday night. Mm -hmm. Is she really? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, just uh, yep. please take forward uh, the that. gist of our conversation this evening. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, you guys might hear some of your that. ideas come out of her mouth. I mean, I think it's going to be a better audience for her than some of the other ones she's been attending recently. So. Yeah, yeah, the last one I went to was not good. Ooh, yeah. 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 Any other yeah. public yeah. comments? Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so why don't we... It starts at 6.30, Monday night. 6 or 6.30. Okay. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Cool. Or Monday night. You want to mingle for that first half hour. True. Uh, okay, so we don't have that much time left. Public comment section or portion, let's do that. And I know you already said that you had some things you want yeah, to share. 
um, so this is sort of the specific reason it came, but I really appreciate this opportunity and how communal this was. I didn't expect that, so thank you. Um, and I, so my my concern um, has to do, as I mentioned before, of plants that are grown in yards in in neighborhoods. Um, right now, I have a I have a small yard, and I have a neighbor who is growing an eight foot tall plant that's right next to our fence line, and so it sort of towers next to my yard. My yard is so small that my kids have to play like two feet from this plant, and it's ripening now, and it's pretty strong, pretty strong. And uh, when I approached him, or my husband approached him and just said, can we work something out? Because he has actually a big yard, so he has some choices on where he grows this. Um, his answer was, the city says I have a right to grow it wherever I want. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's probably true. Um, and I talked to the cannabis program a couple days ago because I was trying to understand what the rules are about that. And they said most of the rules around growth in yards is around, or most of the regulations about it is about commercial use. Um, but if someone's growing for personal use, there are no Ordinances. Or I, I think about that. Yeah, the only thing is it has to be on a public yeah, view. Yeah, yeah. yeah public, public view is that violates us above the fence. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well, that's new because Cannabis Program, they said they knew of nothing except for commercial use or the four plant rule. Yeah. Um, that if it's for commercial form. use, it can't be seen or smelled public by neighbors if they complain, but personal use, there's no. Doesn't like there's a difference, I guess, between commercial and personal. Use code, yeah. Well, this um, is what um, made but it's. But and my, but I think overall I'm just feeling like, I mean, there are those of us who, I'm all for those making choices, but there are some of us who, you know, we don't want to consume, we don't, aren't interested in participating. And and I, one area this could fall under if we're trying to categorize stuff would be sustainability, because I'm just hoping that um, the city can gradually in implement rules that will make make legalization sustain sustainable for the whole community in a sense that we can all sort of live together, you know, and peace peacefully live together. So there is a, are maybe some rules that work for everyone so that people can grow if they want to, but that neighbors feel like they have, because right now when I was told, when I, when I said like, what do I do if he's not, he, I mean, he's just not willing to work with me at all, mm -hmm. um, was you could call the police and I was like, well, that doesn't make, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And um, and they said, well, you could call the city, the Development mm -hmm. Bureau of Development mm -hmm. Services and make an odor complaint, mm -hmm. like a noise complaint. Oh, sure. And I was like, well, may maybe, and I actually called them because I was like, I can't even be sure how would that be, I don't know, what would they do? And they were like, we, we have no idea, we've never heard of that, we don't know mm -hmm. what we do. And I was like, okay, so there's not really, you know, there's not, there's not really a, a mechanism. Mm -hmm to work something out with, with yeah, a neighbor. Yeah, you tried in good faith. But the yeah, I, yeah, I really was, because I was like, I'm yeah. like totally fine, like just move it, he has a big yard, so he, yeah. he really can <laughs> move it away that might mitigate some of the smell, but he put it like right next to, you know, so it just felt like he just wasn't being neighborly. Maybe ask out. him next year, you know, like early spring, if yeah. he could maybe plant it on the other side because maybe it was already planted. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's yeah. Blue right now. what we suggested. And he was like, well, I don't right to grow it where I want. You know, I was like, well, well sure. But, like, yeah, you know, you can really to drink about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what I'm feeling like is if the city had some policies around, you know, like <coughs> distance from a neighbor's yard or um, there are low odor, lower odor strains, like maybe certain strains that are allowed. If it's in a dense neighborhood, Especially can when I, the yards are all can small. Can I ask where you live? Like yeah, in the uh, northeast Portland near Providence Hospital. Up okay. there on about 40th. Isn't yeah, it? like northeast yeah. Irving and 47. So the yards, I mean, like, are like me to you. Like, yeah. that's it. Like, that's yeah. what I got. The, uh, the <laughs> so Officer of Civic Life has within its neighborhood association process a thing called community me mediation. Yeah, and that's what oh. this And you may want to well. consider. Looking into that, they have to want to do it, and right. we oh. recommended it. He's like, oh, it allows a third sure. party to neutrally, right? If they'll do it, oh. if, if they, they right. had. So I just, but I, what I'm feeling like is that, no, no, no. And so, yeah, I had that in here. 
My oh, did request. you? Oh, you're no, 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 I oh. <laughs> <laughs> so small. I kind of feel like the smell thing. I get I not want to scare your kids to see it, but like, what if I'm a vegan and you're barbecuing? Mm. And I'm oh, that's a thing by, right now. And I'm offended <laughs> by the hamburgers. You know, it's yeah. like. Well, and that's a thing. I mean, if someone came to me of that, I'd certainly be like, yeah, that's what's right. out, you know. But, but I, like for me personally, I would say, like as I walk through down the street, I mean, the stuff is yeah. useful, use in public, but people don't know that, you so you encounter it. Like, I, I actually yeah. feel not just lightheaded, it does actually affect me, and I can't be near it, and I have to move. And I, I you know, it's, I have a right to not want my children it's, to it's smell that. I, have, I have that right. It's, so, it's tricky so. because of one of the the thing that has not been put in place is social consumption, right? right? Where social mm -hmm. consumption happens. And if someone, right. we, get asked, we get asked a lot when people come into our dispensary, it's in the smack of a neighborhood, and it's a greenhouse, and folks literally will come <coughs> off the air, off, from the airport straight to greenhouse, because they're living, they're staying in an Airbnb, but they're questioning, that, like, where can they consume? Because right. they don't want to, they're not from here, they don't want any, you know, sort of trouble, but we don't really have, again, that information and that education um, that could help me, because right now it's been loose for three years. Right. So that neighbor is like, well, who are you to tell me where I can grow my plant? And right. there's four plants, because we're not operating on the same page within that. So right. to right. come to, come in and at this point, I think it's because of the lessons learned yeah, and how yeah. important it is that those spaces are available on a community level mm -hmm. to come in, um, be able to share different strains and information about just how you, like if that's your jam, that's your jam. That's something that you're into and you want to be able to grow. These are the proper ways to do that. There's no actuality in proper ways to go and where you can. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of vague. But if you're a federal housing, of some sort, you can't grow. You can lose your apartment residence, mm -hmm. which is not fair to people. You don't get that mm -hmm. option, but if you ever in a resident, if you own a homeowner, then you can. Right. So that's right. privilege again. That's a privilege sort of yeah, yeah, kind of true. snooty way that it may be coming off to. So, but I, I guess my request is okay. just that as the city figures out policies, there could be some basic rules about where, what strain, maybe if there's a oh, way code. that it's lower like code, issues, code, code, like, code issues, you know, so that well. neighbor, and, and a mechanism of like who to call in the city for a neighbor to report that maybe it's against code, because right now there's none of that available. Yeah. Right. Huh. Um, Hi, everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. again. Um, I just wanted to say that it is supposed to be out of public view, it's in Measure 91. Um, I don't know if Portland has reciprocal regulations. Can the idea know? So, um, so measure ninety one is you know state. Right, so. and we we align with that. So it they, it should be out of public. So know. I talked to the cannabis program, and they said that's only for if somebody is growing it for commercial purposes. No, that's state no, law. No, it, it's for, specifically it's for household growth. It's actually yeah. on section okay. fifty six, measure ninety one. So yeah. maybe they just weren't sure. I would check in again. Maybe talk to someone different. And so is there anything about smell too, or is it just you? So the, the I mean, so no. smell I think is just taken care of by, in general, nuisance law, which is mm -hmm. nuisance law is just generally within communities, a lot of things can be a nuisance. Um, smell is one of them, and that can pertain to like a butcher shop or anything that has an offensive smell. So I think you could go that route, but that's a really long process, and you have to you know, talk to the city about what kind of process mm -hmm. that would be. Um, but I would try to talk to someone else mm -hmm. at Oni, yeah. or I guess it's not called Oni anymore, but um, I would just try to talk to someone else about that because I'm pretty sure it's out of public view and maybe that would be more helpful, yeah. you know, in getting a quicker response. Yeah. Right. A nuisance complaint yeah. is a violation that BBS actually has to report on a property. So it's something that gets its own IVR code and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know this because I've had to clear them a lot for people. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I mean, and that, that's all options. Yeah. Um, I'm, I just think there could be, you know, some yeah. cities about that. I might, I might just ask that you and encourage other people who don't come to the, who don't consume, keep coming to these yeah. meetings. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that it's also about talking about the ways that we need to formulate these particular regulations because 
I, it would be cool to have community gardens, community cannabis yeah, yeah, gardens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But because of, oh, you can't have this many amount of plants and you, this can't, you know what I mean? So if the larger community is able to come out and say, okay, we want everyone to be able to experience the way they want to experience. Mm -hmm. But I don't really want to experience that. So, you know, there's this place where you can go. It's a community garden. Oh, you right. can plant your plant. They're safe there. You know what right, I mean? Right, like, right. Totally, and to, yeah. so like to keep coming so that we can all talk about it in a way that allows for further freedoms for everybody, but right. the right restrictions right. for everybody. I totally agree, and I'm I'm all for people having options for themselves. Mm -hmm. I think sustainability is a good category for this because I think overall, if the city has like sort of mutual allowances that everyone you know can have rights within that, then it allows all this to work better and be some more sustainable long term as a community. So um, I think we've, you know, we're piecing together stuff and sort of catch up and yep. haven't gotten all the, you know, ducks in a row. Yeah, but Thanks for showing up here. Yeah, yeah this, this <laughs> is one morning. duck to put in the row. That's what I, spread the I word think too. the gap that, um, the, the regulatory gap that um, the cannabis program staff person that you spoke with um, was addressing might be around um, the fact that even if it is a personal grow and it's in public view, um, right now our city um, guidance for our program does not have that sort of regulation fall underneath our city program. Um, so I think that's why they may have directed you to call the police. Um, because there are these pieces around the established um, regulations that um, that have not really been tasked specifically to um, the staff in our program to go out and, and deal with, and, and partly that's because of just limited resources and also um, the, the you know the personal grow. Um, the, the numbers of people that are growing for personal use um, would far outnumber our resources to kind of act on or regulate that. Right, right. But, but there are city ordinances around odor and also the state um, regulation around um, having your plants out of public view. So um, those are areas that you could act. And, and, um, and I, I've taken notes, um, and I think the group has also heard yeah. your um, suggestions around the sustainability component for those who um, choose not to um, participate in or engage with or use um, and, and want to um, have that factored in as the group considers um, definitions of sustainability. Where would I find the ordinances you said that are, that do exist? It's did you put your email on there? I did, yeah. I can send you some links tomorrow. Oh, great, thank you. And I think Laura said it. If you look under May 91, 91, I forget what it is, but it's section 56. Okay, and that's a state thing? Right, Laura? That's a state thing. That's a state, okay. Laura? Sorry, say it again. It's a little muffled. So where did you find the, the law regarding? Oh, it's measure 91, section 56. Yeah. It says all have have to be out of public view. But I think, you know, the nuisance process, you should go through that. I mean, it's just that if, you know, the city of Portland doesn't have resources, then no one's gonna be able to come out from the city of Portland to help you, then you need to go through the nuisance, um, you know, complaint process so that you can get someone to actually go out there. Because, you know, just being able to point to laws and it's probably not gonna get you very far with a neighbor who doesn't really wanna do anything about it right now anyway. Right, and it, that might make next year him deciding to move his plant much more appealing. So, right. So that's where that eighty-five percent closer. <laughs> um, okay. Does anybody else There's have anything one. to add for public comment? Yeah, just real quick. We're really over um, time, so, keep it so we're starting a new Oregon Cannabis Clinicians Group, Dr. Rachel and I, to uh, work with our peers to affect patient care, and it's primarily education, but it's going to be a lot of advocacy because of legal protection on issues that come up. That's November, October 18th. So this first meeting? This is the first meeting. Yeah, uh, 6 p.m., and that'll be downtown. Cult of the Law is going to host that so we can have a place and 
but we're trying to get the word out to all the medical providers because uh, that's part of the stigma. They just don't. Yeah, that's the way it is. They treat it like it's uh, abuse. That's the way they've been trained. So we want to break that up a little bit. Explain the endocannabinoid system too, so they'll understand there's a real reason why people use the plant, not just because they think it's hogwash. So. <laughs> okay. Seriously, I, a lot of people do. All right. Well, I think that that wraps up the meeting for this evening. This was super productive. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, everybody, so much. And the last thing I will say, I just want to ask you quick: Did anybody see a post about this meeting on Instagram? No. Just yours. Cool. Okay. Well, that's two people who did. So I think I that we should all make an effort to get the word out ourselves, and that's a really easy way to do it. And I didn't get in trouble yet, so I'm assuming it was cool. I didn't ask. <laughs> I was just like, I'm going to do this. So please share. Please encourage more people to come. Our next meeting, October 10th, will probably not be here is what it sounds like. So once that word is out, please spread it so we can get people to come. I feel stuff for y'all today. You if look lovely. Too, I mean, I <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Bye, Laura. Thanks, Laura. Bye.